Why are you guys so excited? What is what is so ex I, You know what? Maybe don't tell me what's so excited about this game. By playing Doki Doki Literature Club, you agree that you are at least 13 years of age and you consent to expose of highly disturbing content. Highly dis How highly disturbing? <laughs> Hey, it's Dan Savaldo. I know him. This game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Is it like... Am I gonna... Is this gonna be like... A porn game? Is this like a porn game? Mmm, tech speed. Auto forward time? Sure. Good, because small ants mom's here, and I don't want I don't want that. Lots of reading. Please enter your name. Who? All right. Hey. I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. This girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you know each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this. Starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently. And honestly, I got tired of waiting up. I improvised there. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. Ah! I overslept again. I saw that. But I caught you this time. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. E, you say that like you were thinking about, about ignoring me. That's mean, Poo. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Sorry, it's late. I can't give it to me. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be... I guess I don't have it in you to be mean, even if you want to. Oh. Whatever you say... Oh, wait. That's me. Just I can just talk like myself there. We cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with our other students making their daily commute. By the way, Pooh, have you decided on a club to join yet? The club? The club? I told you already. I'm not interested in joining any clubs, bitch. And I haven't been looking. Yo! Parker, thank you for the raid. How is everything? I hope everything's going wonderful today. Yeah. Thank you for the raid. Um, I appreciate you. Um... How is everyone doing? I hope you're doing wonderful. I hope your man's is doing wonderful. I hope I see y'all soon. Um, I'm cool. I've, I'm playing this weird fucking game. I've never played this game before, so nobody spoil it. What up, wife? There's a slider in the fridge? Lit. Cool. Hmm. Obviously. Good, have a good night. I'll see you in eight hours. I'm excited for, yeah. <clears throat> Can I, um, shut that door, please, actually? Go go out. Please, if you can. All right. All right. I haven't been looking either. E, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did. In one of our many conversations, where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Oh, I'm, that was me thinking. Sayori likes to worry too much. Am I saying her name right? Sayori? Sayori? Yo, night. Have a good night. Thank you so much for the raid. Thanks, everybody. Um, Crafty Boss, thank you for 14 months. You're hot, by the way. Crafty Boss. Um, Smamp Mom, thanks again for the raid um, there as well. Board Scientist, Wonelli, Crunk, thank you guys. Okay, 
Sayori so likes to worry a little bit too much about me when I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know? That's very sweet. And I know you're happy now, but I dare the thought of you becoming an, a neat. That sounds offensive. In a few years because you're not used to the real world. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. All right, all right. I'll look for a few clubs. No promises. I'll try. I promise you that. <laughs> Where's her nose? It's right there. It's a small nose. She has a very small nose. Lots of breathing problems. Lots of breathing problems. Neat is not employed in education or training. That sounds awesome. <laughs> that sounds awesome, honestly. More than that, I'm surprised I even re relent myself to her. Zach, thank you for the raid. <laughs> I was uh, just getting raided by everybody here all of a sudden. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for the raid. Is this when everybody gets off? Is this when all the DGens start to get off? How many raids can you get? That was three in 10 minutes. Give me your raids. Fat, thank you so much. Give me your raids. Give me your raids and give me your primes. I'll be here for the next 10 hours. Uh, okay, I'm in a classroom. The school day is ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Relatable. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. I might have a choice. Uh, Sayori, what's your favorite anime chat? Sayori, hello! Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I've never seen any of them. Uh, I look around and realize I'm the only one left in the classroom. It's just me and her. Kind of weird. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Which club are you joining? Yes. Death Note? Death Note? I see two people. Two people I know in real life just suggested Death Note, which makes me, which automatically makes me feel like I should do it. When two people I know in real life, separately, who don't know each other, recommend it? Yeah. Mine's Afro Samurai. Uh, you don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I, you know... Know what? Well, then you can come to my club. Sayori, yeah? There's no way I'm going to your club. What a meanie. Sayori is vice president of the literature club. Oh, I love a good book club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did because she thought it would be fun to start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm gonna go to Anime Club. Come on, please, why do you care so much anyway? Well, I got told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member, and Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. Don't make promises you can't... Oh, wait. <clears throat> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead or if she is so cunning as to have planned all of this out. I let out a long sigh. <sighs> Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Wait, not auto. Yes, let's go! Chad, did I sign up for seven hours of this? <laughs> is this a game or am I reading a book <laughs> this game is insane man alright and thus today marks the day 
I sold my soul for cupcake. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activities. She's full of energy. She swings open the classroom door and boom. New members here. I need like a girl like voice changer here. Yeah. Yeah, it gets good after 50 hours. <laughs> I told you, don't call me a new member. I glanced around the room. Oh, hello, girl one. Welcome to Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Weirdly, I have the same voice as Sayori. She always says nice things about me. Girl two, seriously, you brought a boy? Weirdly, I also sound like the other two girls. Way to kill the atmosphere. No dicks. Ah, girl three. What a nice surprise. Weirdly, I do have a different voice. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Sorry. <laughs> All words escape me in this situation. My teen angst <coughs> takes over. This club. It's full of incredibly cute girls. What are you looking at? No. <laughs> you want to say something, say it. So sorry. That's Suki. Hmph. The girl with a sour attitude, whose name is apparently not Suki, is the one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She's also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Oh, wait. You can just ignore her when she gets moody? Oh, wait, Sayori, uh, Sayori says that quietly into my ear and then turns back towards the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. Don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Well, it's, do I ever get to date any of these people? Do I get to make any choices about dating one of these? And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? Oh. I'm dating them all? Um, respectfully, chat, before I do this, I want you to know that I'm saying this respectfully, okay? Respectfully. And as an in role play, in role play, as if I am this young, presumably white yet Japanese, big eyed character. Smash. <laughs> yeah, I like Monica. <laughs> it's great to see you again, Pooh. <laughs> Respectfully, in character, only in character. <laughs> in character. Monica still smiles sweetly. We do know each other. We've rarely talked, but we've been in the same class all year. She's probably the most popular girl in class. She's smart, beautiful, athletic, and out of my league. So having her smile at me genuinely feels a little... Uh, you too, Monica. Uh, you too, Monica. Respectfully. Come sit down, Pooh. We made a room at the table so you can sit next to me and Monica. Get those cupcakes. Yeah, you get them, Natsuki. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? I love tea. The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. I'm picturing it in my eyes. As Sayori mentioned, it's been wide, so there's one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki probably, proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Are you ready? Ta-da! Woohoo! She lifts the foil of the tray and reveals a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute. 
I had no idea you were good at baking, Natsuki. But you know, just hurry and take one. Tori grabs one first, and then Monica. I eat one third because, you know, I don't want to be last, but I also don't want to be first. It's delicious. Sori talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her. She is sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Why are you thanking me? It's not like... Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or anything? I mean, technically you did make them for me. Sayori's, well, maybe. But not for, for you, you. Dummy. All right, all right. I gave up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismissed the conversation. Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting the teapot down next to the cupcake tray. You want this whole tea set in this class? You keep this whole tea set in this classroom? I say as I drink the tea. Don't worry, the teachers give us permission. Don't worry, the teachers give us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? I guess. Eh, don't let yourself... Don't let yourself get intimidated. You're just trying to impress you. That's not... Oh, she's embarrassed. Uh-oh, blushing. Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant, you know... I believe you. I love you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So what made you consider the literature club? Um, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged her by Sayori. Um, how old is this character that I'm playing here in this situation? Hold on, I'm only in five minutes in They're all 18. Everyone is 18. We're confirming everyone's 18. I don't know. They're all they're all 100 year old dragons. Okay. Something tells me that I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged by here by Sayori. Yeah. Dan Savaldo says they're all 18. Cannon says they're all 18. And so me, I am also. Me, I am. In this theoretical world, I'm the same age as this person here. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori really seemed happy here. Respectfully. Respectfully. It's just, it's just like, the teen angst is real. Well, make sure you feel right at home, okay? He probably did that so people would would stop being weird about them. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own uh, your own club? You'll probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club? See, it's like there's jokes that write themselves. <laughs> Who's canically 39 years old going back to high school? No, I'm not Billy Madison here. This is a good, this is this pose. This is, how, this is how normal people stand. Well, you know, to be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. Feels like nothing about arguing about budget, publicity, how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get in Lidger, then I'm fulfilling the dream. Monica's a great leader. Yuri nods in agreement. And I'm surprised there aren't more people in this club yet, I say awkwardly. Must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many, very, not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. 
especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. I can. I don't know how if I can do this. Am I gonna have to do this forever? Is there any time where I'm gonna be able to just talk in? in my... <laughs> but it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm, I feel like I feel like now that I started, now that I started, I can't stop. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah. 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 Everyone enthusiastically agrees. We put our hands in the middle for a high five. A camera pans from the top and our hands go like this. Psh. Scene. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they were all so delighted of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. Literature! Sabu, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, um... I just read Gundog. Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. I mutter to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head quickly perks up. Looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not, not much of a reader, I guess. <laughs> well, uh, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. I, Chad, I've never felt more awkward than this. I have, I have never, ever, ever felt more awkward than this right now. I have got to say, this is, this is, this is definitely peak awkward. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Let's see, it's because, you know, if you're going to do it, you got to do it correct, right? You know what I mean? Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build up in complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so resolved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of you, your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of... Did she just tell me I have a lack of imagination? Ah, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasp at something I can relate to at a minimum level. Thank you so much, uh, BTK Evan, Dynamic Panda, R2D2, DC Izzy, The Sampans, Krungo Cast. Thank you, Zach, as well, for the raid, you sexy people. I desperately grasp at something I can relate to at a minimum. Thank you, at least... Thank you for subbing for this. And scene, you know? It's really nice when an artist can really be appreciated for his art. <laughs> At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is not often very successful at changing the way you look at the world. If only for a brief moment. I hate horror. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. <laughs> That's Natsuki's voice now. That's right. Usually I write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What, what gives you that idea? <laughs> he left a piece of scrap paper behind in the last club meeting. <laughs> It looked like you were working on a poem, Gold. <laughs> don't, don't say it out loud now. <laughs> Alright. Give that back. Fine, fine. 
E, you get your cupcakes and poems. Everything you do is just as cute as you are. Sayori, Sayori sidles up behind Itsuki and puts her hand on her shoulders. I'm not cute. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? <laughs> I, <clears throat> I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No, no. Natsuki averts her eyes. You would like them. Ah, not a very confident writer. Oh man, nagging. Nagging. Nagging so hard. <laughs> Dude, I had to clear my voice because I'm losing my voice. <laughs> I should have filled up my water. I understand how Natsuki feels. We've been in this club meeting for 24 hours. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities. I thank you, Best Kansu, for five. And showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have some writing experience too, Yuri? I don't have any more tones for women, I'm sorry. Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and have Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Oh, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay. I have an idea, everyone. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. The next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. <laughs> yeah! And plus, now it'll help us draw and strangle the club. Isn't that right? She smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on. There's still one problem. Oh, uh, what's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this fucking club. Theory may have convinced me to stop by, but um, I haven't made a decision. Puts on sunglasses. I still have other clubs to look around in. Lower sunglasses. I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, but, I'm sorry, I thought. Oh, who? You all, you, you all just got shorter. I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. God damn it, that's the price I have to give. I've decided then, I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls light up, or all at the same time. Yes, I'm so happy. Tori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey! You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I'd have been pissed. That makes it official. Welcome to the Literature Club. Ah, thanks, I guess. Oh, okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Writing a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Chat. I'm oh sorry, these, these strawberries are really big. Look at this thing, man. What a strawberry can of Red Bull. I don't know. The big strawberry. It's filling. It's sorry. Who I look forward to seeing you express yourself. It's really good. Actually, not a berry. Oh my god, I fucking hate you so much. I didn't say it was a berry. I said it was a strawberry dick fuck cock butt fuck tumin. 
<laughs> Don't you dare leave right now, Sam Pants. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside of me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit chat as Yuri and Suki clean up their food. Hey, Boo, since we're already here, you want to walk home together? Damn right. But we never walk home anymore because she stays for the other clubs. All right, let's go. Two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Chat, I'm just gonna say it's weird that there's four different boob sizes. I'm not saying that doesn't happen, it's just, it's just weird, respectfully. Is that weird? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Is it though? I don't know. Is it? It's just like... And I need to, still need to make the most of my circumstances. A good fortune will find me. And four colors of hair? Ah, that was too kind of a shared. And I guess that starts with writing poems tonight. All right, let's write some poems. Do I get to write this poem myself? It's time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club members will like. Something good will happen with whoever likes your poem the most. Okay. Okay. Hmm. 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 I'm going to pick Embrace and Parfait. Because you can rhyme a lot of things with Parfait, chat. You can rhyme a lot of things with Parfait. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can rhyme tons of things with Parfait. Kawaii? Mmm. Pleasure. Parfait is a metaphor. Explode, also a metaphor. Uh, swimsuit. I'm gonna go swimsuit. <laughs> this is a great. This is a great. Can someone make sure you're writing these down? So I, I'm gonna make a real poem out of these. Um, uh, let's, what's incongruent? I don't even know what that means. Mm, a lot of these words suck. Sparkle. Uh, treasure, sugar, precious, feather, intellectual, electricity, dream, calm. Um, electricity. Oh, climax. Or boop. Or boop. So bop. Uh, I'm gonna go with boop. Mmm. Bouncy, poof, games, kiss, sticky, milk, waterfall. Chad, I wish there was a rhyme or reason, but I'm kind of just picking whatever I feel like is gonna make the funniest one right now. Let's go with milk. Captive, lazy, uncanny, fickle, summer, spinning, nature, warm, rain, raindrops. Um, massacre. Color, email, pain, disarray, landscape. Or follow your heart. Okay. Email. <laughs> this is going to be the greatest poem of all time. Um, imagination. 
Imagination. Together, chocolate, inferno, graveyard, disorient, portrait, insight, marshmallow. It's a throwback to the parfait. Uh, what's entropy mean? Entropy, entropy? Un unending, thing extreme, fluffy, ribbon, cheeks, cheeked up on a Thursday. Smiles, contamination, vivacious, smile, nightgown, universe, jumpy, extort, sweet. Is it Pokemon? That's what I thought. Effulgent? Effulgent? What? Am I dumb? Oh my god, am I just a dumb person? English is my second language, though. Yeah. English is my second language, so. What was my first? Baby. Yeah, I was speaking baby first. I was a baby. Um, Amazing. Oh, puppy. Yeah, I don't even need to look anywhere else. Empty, tragedy, lollipop, heartbeat, holiday, rain cloud, laugh, broken, lucky, laugh. Uh, depression, peaceful, adventure, after mirage, suicide. Lipstick. Doki Doki. I mean, I, it's the name of the game. I want to say the name of the game in the in my poem. Mm, uh, uh, awesome. Everything is awesome. Hi again, Boom. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Nah, don't worry. <clears throat> this might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in. Everyone's already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Boo. I hope this isn't too overwhelming a commitment for you. Making you dive at first into literature is not something you're accustomed to. Oh, come on. Like, he deserves any slack. Sarah told me you didn't even want to join any clubs. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. And Suki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the room. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and Man Manga. Manga. It's literature. <laughs> Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back in her seat. Don't worry, guys. Who always gives his best as long as he's having fun. He also does busy work without even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. Oh, how dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy, it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Oh, that was just me. You two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come you and Boo can become good friends too? Uh um, Sayori. Um, um? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh. You even brought something today, you know? Wait, wait, Sayori. Uh, me? Um, not, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? Then never mind. Sayori made it sound like it was a big deal when it was... Sayori made it sound like it was a big deal when it was really not. Oh, uh, what do I do? I'm sorry, Yuri, I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is, th is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. No, all right. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out. So I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read so it could keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know... Discuss it if you wanted. 
This is how, how is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book that she thinks I like, despite me not reading much. Oh, Curry, thank you all. Definitely read this. Enthusiastically, I take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Monica to kick off some scheduled activities. Wait, do we meet at club every day? It's an everyday club meeting? How much do I know about this game? Not... I know that it, I know that I don't enjoy it so far. I'll say that. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monique, we're having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Here's the thing. I really, really like Dan Savalto. He's a he's a nice man. We've had breakfast together. He's a really good dude. But what the fuck? I cannot help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile... Atsuki's rummaging around in the closet. She's utters an exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed. I approach her in case she needs a hand. You looking for something in there? <laughs> Freaking Monica. She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point of keeping your collection organized? Is someone else just gonna mess it up? Atsugi slides a bunch of stacks, slides a bunch of stacks, books and stuff, blah, blah. Manga. You read manga, right? <laughs> uh, sometimes. <laughs> it's one of those things where you can't admit you're really into it until you figure out where the other person stands. <laughs> How did you know anyway? <laughs> I, well, I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. That's racism. What's that supposed to mean? Yeah, that's racism. I, I, I see. There's a lone volume of manga. <laughs> Admits the stack of various books on the side of one of these shelves. <laughs> Curious, I pull it out of the stack. There it is. Natsuki snatches it out of my hand. She turns to a box and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Ah, much better. Seeing a box set with one book missing is probably the most irritating sight in the world. I know that feel. I get a closer look at the box she's admiring. Parfait Girls? It's a series I've never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either way out of my demographic or it's simply terrible. <laughs> if you're going to judge, you can don't go through the glass on that door. She points to the classroom door. <laughs> hey, I wasn't judging anything. I didn't even say anything. It was the tone of your voice. But I tell you one thing, Pooh. Consider this a lesson straight from the literature club. Don't judge a book by its cover now. Natsuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. I'm going to show you exactly why. She shoves the book right in my hands. Ah. I stare at the cover. We're still in the intro? It features four girls in colorful attire striking animated feminine poses. Exceedingly mo. Don't just stand there. Ooh ah. Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. She then takes a seat against the wall beneath the window of cells. She pats on the ground, blah, blah, blah. Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable if, like, if we sat in a chair? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work, darling. We can't read at the same time like that. But why can't we read in a chair? I guess it's easier to be close together like this. <gasps> Don't just say that. You make me feel weird about it. Oh, wait, I said that. I said the close together? Natsuki crosses her arm and scooches an inch away from me. Sorry. I didn't expect... I didn't exactly expect to be sitting this close to her either. Not that I can say it's a particularly bad thing. I open the book. 
with only a few seconds for Natsuki once again inches closer, reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I won't notice. I can fear her peering over my shoulder, much eager to begin reading than I am. Wow! Has it been that long since I read the beginning? Huh. You don't go back and flip through the older volumes every now and then? No, he reads a book twice. Not really. Maybe sometimes after I finish all the series. I'm just joking. I know there's people that read book twice. I, I just don't. I, I, I don't think I've ever read a book twice. I think I will read Road Game of Thrones if they, if they ever come out with one. A new one. I'll reread those. Hey, are you paying attention? Uh, I am, but nothing's really happening, so I can talk at the same time. Looks like it's a bunch of friends in high school. Typical slice of life affair. I kind of grew out of these since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough for make up for the lack of plot. Burn. So, what should I expect from this? Is there going to be a plot? Oh. Well, obviously there's a plot. You think I would enjoy something that didn't have a plot? I mean, well, I guess I know what you're saying. A lot of the beginning is about simple things. Like there's a really funny chapter where they're obsessed with the guy at the ice cream shop. But that just helps to get you to know the characters and because it's still entertaining. But later on, there's all sorts of drama. Like when they get into all the backstories and when some of the romance starts to happen, that's what really makes it so darn good. There are so many touching pots. Ah, oh, is that so? It sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Maybe I underestimated you. Hey, wait. What's that supposed to mean? Natsuki gives me a little shove. I just meant I haven't seen you at your full power. Ugh. Good save. Ah, this chapter seems like it's about baking. That was a pretty smooth, actually. The full power line, that was pretty smooth. Is there no other video games left on Earth? I guess. This is just a guess, but is there a lot of baking in this manda? Well, Matsuki pauses for a moment, as if she doesn't want to admit something. Yeah. Why does that matter? It doesn't. I was just curious, since you enjoy baking too, right? That That's just coincidence. I just happened to get into baking around the same time I got into this manja. <laughs> like I would ever get into anything because of a manja. I feel bad for anyone that impressionable. Ah ha ha. Yeah, definitely not a coincidence. I guess that explains Nasuki's interest in baking. Still, of all the hobbies to pick from uh, Magia, that's definitely one of the better ones. Not to mention, she's really good at it. So who am I to judge? We read on for a few more minutes. I have finished a couple chapters at this point. Oh, are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not. Even though you were just watching me read? Well, I'm fine with that. If you say so. I guess it's fun sharing something with you. Like, or I guess it's fun sharing something you like with someone else. I always get excited when I convince any of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? Hmm. Y you don't? Hmm. That's not. Well, I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? Don't you share your Mangia with your friends? Could you not rub it in? Jeez. Ah, sorry. Oomph. Like I could ever get friends to read this. They just think mangoes is for kids. I can't even bring them up without them being all like, Ugh, you still haven't grown out of that? Makes me want to punch them in the face. <laughs> Very mature reaction. Yeah, I know those kind of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge. Much less friends who are also into it. I'm already kind of a loser, so I guess I gravitated toward other losers over time. Oh, Baron Sayori? It's probably harder for someone like you. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Wait, which part? I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found this. At least it's safe here in the club room. Except Monica was kind of a jerk about it. I can't win. Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am. Reading it. Pushes back hair. Doesn't solve any of my problems. Maybe. But at least you're enjoying yourself, right? <gasps> Riz. Ha ha ha. 
Geez, that's enough. You gonna keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. I flip the page. Suddenly she starts laughing. Yeah, da da da. I totally forgot that happens. She puts her finger on one of the panels. Minori is my favorite character. She's a closet weeb. Yeah, she's also from Mississippi. You always feel a little bad for her. Since she's so unlucky. But it gets especially bad when. Oh, I shouldn't be talking about that. Just finish this. Don't ruin it for me. Sparkles with excitement is a stark contrast to her usual bossy tone. But if he's not sharing her favorite manga with friends, I can understand why. <laughs> it's hard to express in words the feeling you get when connecting with someone like that. For being able to provide for an Itsuki for him, it's a rare experience. The thought makes me smile a little bit to myself. Okay, everyone. Already with today's poems. Yeah, let's read these poems. Could your timing be any worse? Sorry, let me stick my butt out to you. I just need to make sure we have enough time. Though you do look pretty cozy over there. Ah, 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 ah. Eh. Ah, ah. Natsuki suddenly notices how close she's gotten to me. She hastily slides herself a good 12 inches away from me. All right. Guess I'll stop here for now. I close the book and hand it to her. You're just giving it back? Don't you want to know what happens? Ah, uh, yeah, but Monica just... Don't be dumb. Just take it home with you. Eh, is that really all right? I say that mostly because I didn't really plan on using my spare time to read this fucking shit. Well, of course. You ever have that happen, chat? Where you're like, oh, that's cool. And then they're like, oh, take it. And you're like, no, no. It would take forever to finish if you didn't take it home. Just finish that one tomorrow so we can start the next one. And if it gets bent, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> By tomorrow? Might fall behind in some shows if I try to get through this. I suppose that's a necessary sacrifice in exchange for seeing her enthusiastic face. All right, then. I stand up. I return to where I put myself and carefully slip my book in the bag. By the way, do you remember to write a poem last night? Oh, did I remember to write a poem? Yes, of course I remembered. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I hadn't really done this before. But now that everybody's ready, why don't you find someone to share it with? I can't wait. Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori is on a wrinkled note sheet loosely torn from a spiral notebook. And the other name, Monica, wrote hers in composition notebook. I can already see her pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. I feel like, chat, I want to show it to Monica. Yeah, I feel like I absolutely want to show it to Monica. Yeah. Yeah. Yuri, you guys just want to hear this Yuri voice. You guys just want to hear Yuri voice. <laughs> Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. Should have played Yakuza. Mm -hmm. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes, more than enough time for her to finish reading. Um, oh, so sorry, I forgot to start speaking. It's, it's fine, don't force yourself. Uh, I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on one second, okay. This has to be your first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it, cause, um... Ah, so it's that bad? No, 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 not bad per se. 
Did I just raise my voice? Oh, I'm so sorry. She presses her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes we really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine, I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Patrick, thank you for that sub. Right, um, it's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through all that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. And I think it's the most noticeable thing that I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they try to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The result is that both style and expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stamining is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but all that comes with practice and learning by... Oh, wait. It might take some time, but all that comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Mitsuki... <laughs> Natsuki could be a little bit biased, though. Bias out. Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. It's fine. I'm not sure Yuri is apologizing to herself, me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. Ooh, it's so much better than you. I mean, it's good. I'll share my thought process behind it. Smiles dreamily as if that's a rare opportunity for her, which in itself is kind of dreamy. After all, isn't it supposed to be literature club? <clears throat> Alright, chat. Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue green hue of the future. I bathe calm, breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. I am so sorry I have such terrible handwriting. Yeah, bitch, who writes in cursive nowadays? What, what? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you such a long time to read. Ah, well, that's because I was wondering why the fuck your poem didn't rhyme, bitch. It's not a fucking poem. You just wrote down a bunch of words. I actually think your handwriting's pretty. <laughs> Hickory dickory doc. This bitch don't know how to write a poem. Gosh. That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it was short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Do they usually rhyme? I'm really glad you liked it. I'll be honest, since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you, <clears throat> Are you into ghosts, Yuri? Uh-huh. Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Pooh. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember, the poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left without nothing. That's a more, lot more solemn, putting it that way. Honestly, I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's, it's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy, you think. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm gonna have to show it to all of them. I gotta show it to all of them? That's a good poem, Boom. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course. Uh, of course, it's not that good. 
I'm okay. Am I? Would I be writing poems in spare time? Oh, I guess that's right. But that's why it impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid you wouldn't do it seriously, or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy that you wrote one. It just reminds me that you're really part of the club now. Uh, not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the classroom. Well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I won't break my promise. See? It's like I said before. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people. That's something only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? This will be my way of thanking you. All right, I'm going to hold you to that one. Now, now you'll read my poem too, right? We'll, we'll see about that. All right. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you miss me. Kissing my forehead to help me get out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above. The sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you to bard. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. Bars. Sayori, this is just a guess, but did you wait until this morning to write this? No! Just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to the yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Ah, uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say it was a bad poem. It came out nicer. How should I put it? It sounds just like you. Yeah, maybe that's why you were late. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school, it's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. I guess there's no point in arguing. There's no point. All right. Next time I won't forget. I'm gonna write the best poem ever. I look forward to it, said me. All right, Natsuki, let's do this. Okay, well, let's start with the things I don't like. First of all, um, Natsuki rereads my poem. N never mind, I don't feel like giving you my opinion. Uh, what's the point of sharing my poem in the first place? I wrote this when I could have been doing other things. Um, uh, in fact, remember I said I wanted to read your poems? That's what I had in mind when writing this. I want to help you feel comfortable enough to share yours. Like Monica said. Uh, well, I'd be more comfortable sharing my poem if yours was really bad. You were supposed to show me some dumb poem and make me go, ha, well, that's not great, but let me show you what real literature looks like. And you went and ruined it. I hope you're happy. This is a goddamn masterpiece, quite possibly the greatest poem I've ever read in my life. Holy shit. So in other words, you're saying you liked it. Er... And Suki's retort gets caught in her throat. Oh, you're so... Just you don't understand anything, do you? I already told you that. You don't have to go announcing to the world like you're all self-important. Pretty sure you never actually said that. I say that mostly to myself. And Suki must really hate me or something. I can't figure out if it's a win or a loss that she liked my poem. In any case, you still need to show me yours, right? Er, fine, I guess. Only because Monica... Oh, only because Monica will make me if I don't. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls they can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. And people, well, they can try. But that's about it. Listen to Tsuki, I'm not gonna lie. 
I told you that you weren't gonna like it. Listen, I, I like it. What? Yeah, yeah. I, I am being honest. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing stuff has to be all sophisticated and stuff. But some people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poem for people to express themselves? And you just express that eagles can fly. Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yeah, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like, people can try. Hey, everyone around you get really disheartened, so I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But there's other nice things about simple writing that puts some more weights on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. I'm basically like the Tupac of my generation. Oh, so you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it's meant to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, but I mean, I'm also 18 apparently. We're all 18, of or at least. Yeah, according to the creator. I don't really care how old everyone is, but Nosugi is feeling proud that I won't take that away from her. Hi, Pooh. Having a good time so far? Oh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to be up, okay? All right, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to keep bringing things up. Roses are red, violets are blue. You heard what I said, banana. <sighs> I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Thanks, Corey. Anyway, anyway, want you want to share your poem with me? Kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Don't worry, Pooh. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier we'll all get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Hmm. I like it, Pooh. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. Ah -ha 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 -ha. Oh, jeez. No, no, no. It kind of makes me think something Natsuki would write. And she's a good... Yeah, she's such a good writer. Chimpanzees can... Play... Good morning from Scotland. How am I feeling? It's morning in Scotland right now. What time is it in Scotland, mate? Isn't it? If you say so. I just got done watching Ted Lasso, and that's the most amount of British I've watched. Are any of the people in Ted Lasso like famous British actors? By any chance, you ever read anything? I love The Giving Tree, dude. I fucking love The Giving Tree. Maybe a long time ago. He's famous for telling all kinds of stories, just a few some things. Poems can be funny, endearing, or even sad. And sometimes they're only a few lines long. Oh, they might even feel like they're written for kids. But if you think about them, they can express views of the world that would apply to anybody. I see. You're saying that Natsuki is kind of like that? Well, sort of. Maybe she's not an expert, but she probably won't find much filler in her poems. It might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning through. So I can see why it would be kind of a poem to explore. Oh, I'm sure it'll all end up trying different things. It could take a lot of while before I'm comfortable doing this. All right, we can try a new poem. Everyone else might be a little biased for their own kinds of styles, but I always help you find what suits you the most. Don't force yourself to write anything around that. I can't keep up this high voice much longer, chat. It's making my head explode. Yeah, it's making my head explode. Anyway, do you want to read my poem? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to be not very good. Well, it's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way. It doesn't mean I don't always feel that way. I gotta relax here. Oh, oh. That doesn't mean I, I always feel that way. I see. Well, let's just read it then. Hole in the wall. It couldn't have been me. 
See the direction the spa spackle protrudes? A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend. I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas are already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep, stretching forever into everything, a hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. I don't know how I feel about poetry in general, chat. I feel like poetry is why say why say many word when few word get job done. So what do you think? Oh, it's very free form, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not the person to the person to ask for feedback. Yeah, that style's gotten pretty popular nowadays. Few word do trick. I'm a haiku fan. I'm the biggest fan of haiku. If you I tell you right now, if you were a teacher and you gave me a write a poem as a like an assignment you were getting a haiku poem and then if you gave me a bad grade I was going to argue that grade I'd spend more time arguing the grade than I would have just writing a regular fucking poem that is a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines performed out loud it can be really powerful what's the inspiration behind this one uh, well I'm not sure if I know how to put it I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. Kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's my tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about this, if you keep your pen on the same spot for too long, you just get a big, dark puddle of ink. Oh, maybe that's me with, like, new, hot YouTube videos right now. Just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. You. I guess that's everyone. I glanced around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. Oh. I guess that's what I ended up putting myself into. Across the room, Sayori Mona, and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Atsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch their expressions change. Atsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, oh, thanks. Yours is cute. It's cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? I wrote it with symbols, a musical instrument. It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. Hmm. How can that be cute? I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. You mean you have to try hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Calling her, uh, see you next Tuesday. Humph. I know, I'm just, ch I'm in chill mode right now. What am I eating? Uh... 
I'm mean, eating. Oh shit! I thought it was off screen. <laughs> I'm eating. Um, sorry. Yeah, no free feet. You all owe a sub. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. You got to blur that out. You got to blur that out. We skill the video. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And Pooh did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but oh, these two, these two do not hungry. like each other. And Pooh liked my poem too, you know. I liked everyone's poem though. Listen, ladies, ladies, I'm just gonna be real. I'm just going to keep Saying yes and being nice to all of you until one of you aggressively makes the first move on me. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Uh oh. Why did the music stop? Oh. Why does she have vampire teeth? Wait, did the music stop or did my volume go down? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Ah, uh, that's not what I... You, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just... Maybe you're just jealous that Pooh appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. And how you know he didn't appreciate my advice? Are you that full of yourself? Uh-oh. Oh, ladies. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Pooh started showing up. I felt like they were the same size as they were yesterday. Not that I was observing. How does that work? N Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Pooh! She's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have even happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no goddamn reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Pooh. There's no reason we have so many deep expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings. The most effectively avoiding them is not only unnecessary limiting yourself, but also a waste. You understand that, Pooh, don't you? Um, well... How did I get dragged in this? I don't know shit about writing. But whoever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. Okay, Chad, I'm gonna think about this logically, okay? And also in character. I'm gonna think about this in character, okay? And logically. I, as an 18 year old boy, I'm probably gonna go out probably going to try to please the person who just got pointed out that they have really large boobs. <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's just be real. Henty girl or... I mean, she's, she's, me, she's mid-boob. Yeah. Natsuki. You're right that I liked your poem. Wait, that's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone else's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all. Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously. I understand, Yuri. And? You're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I, 
was impressed. Woo woo that! But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting feelings into it. And it becomes something really personal. That's why Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I, I see. I did not notice that. I am so sorry. But Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well. And if you just told her how you felt, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did. It was her that. That. Natsuki, that's enough. You both said some things that you didn't mean. Yuri apologized. Don't you think you should too? Natsuki clenches her fists. And then nobody has taken her side. Oh, suck it, Natsuki. She's trapped. At this point, being defiant only because she can't handle the pressure. I end up even feeling bad for her. Uh, um, sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps to take a walk to clear my head. Sayori, she doesn't need to. You know what? I'm gonna go do just do that. It'll spare me from having to look at all your faces right now. Snatches her poem from the desk and walks out. On her way out, she crumples up her poem, throws it in the trash. She didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands where she stares at her desk. I gingerly approach, sit in the adjacent chair. Everything's all right. I am so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. <laughs> no, Yuri, I don't hate you. How could anyone not have gotten frustrated at being treated like that? You handled it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. I respect you as both a woman and a poet. I'm thankful to every part of this club. It's one more thing. That one thing that Itsuki said about you. I would never do anything so shameful, so, uh... What thing did she say? Oh, well, never mind. I'm going to go make some tea. Big enough for more than one person, okay? Okay, everyone, it's time for us to leave. How did we feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun, except for the fact that two of, two of our five members got in a fight and one of them stormed off when we all bullied a little, we all bullied the youngest person in our group. I'd say it was worth it. It was all right, mostly. How about you? I'd say the same. It was neat. In that case, we'll do the same thing. Wait, no, we're gonna write another poem. I did a little more about the poems that everyone's like. With any luck, I can impress them. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Ooh, ready to walk home? Terry beams at me. It truly been a while since I spent so much time together. I can't say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori, about what happened earlier. What do you mean, you know, between the two girls? Does that kind of thing happen often? No, 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 no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise, they're both wonderful people. You don't, you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. You, you know, Pooh, it's nice that you, I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone makes me the happiest. I think everyone really likes you too. Every day is going to be so much fun. Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone's nice, but does it really need to stop there? Wait, what? Am I trying to get a harem? What is happening? I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I say that more to myself than her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. This is creepy. Write a good poem. A mango harem. Um, let's try adventure. Um, imagination. Bimax. Swimsuit again. That's in there again. 
Uh, cheeks after swimsuit. That just makes sense. Uh, then nightgown. Then party. It's, it's a theme, right? It's a theme. We're going beach, club, another club, right? That's what's happening, okay? Um, you get dazzled after that happens. Um, then the next day you feel a little shame, okay? But then we're flying to another club, all right? All right, we're flying to friends, okay? And after we fly to our friends, we're listening to music, of course. We're being silly. Um, we kiss. Um, it's special. Um, and then we get a little sticky. Uh-huh. A little passionate. Um, uh, after that, I tell you about my contamination. Um, we both get scars. <laughs> and end up alone. choices matter at all? Does these choices matter at all? <laughs> Another day passes and it's time for a club meeting already. Fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a little more comfortable here. Entering the club, the usual scene greets me. Hey Pooh, yo Sayori, you're in a good mood today. I'm not used to you being in the club. I'm in the club, I'm up in the club. It's pretty simple to get you in a good mood when I'm up in the club. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come get to me to buy a snack? I'll eat some strawberries right fucking now. I'll buy that. Uh, 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 uh. I'm not going with you. Sorry, Sayori. Go yourself, dumb bitch. <laughs> That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Wait, why won't I go with her to get a snack? Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Um, uh, well, that all of a sudden at all. Um, I just, I don't, I'm not going with you, you broke bitch. She nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles the latch and gets it open. Two small coins fall out. I knew it. I'm not buying you food. How did you even know? It's simple. Have you had enough money in the first place? You would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So you're not hungry or want an excuse to take a walk? Or you plan to convenient forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. So that only leaves the one option. Ooh. Get wrecked. You're a girl and you're always hungry. That's... Yeah. There's, women have... There's sometimes... Sometimes... Um, the women have two moods. Angry... Hangry or currently eating. That's it. Yeah. And that's okay. I also feel those moods. Yeah. Is she pregnant? No. Jeez. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Ah, ah, ah. Yuri suddenly giggles. Yeah, I didn't notice she was listening in. Her face is in her book as always. Ah, ah. I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Tell Pooh to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, say you we. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling the mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough of retribution. How's the baby formed? Ah, did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen that much, but it's a fun side of you. There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, now I have to accept the retribution. That. Still coming from you, Sayori. Guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. 
After all, she told you guys she was bringing to the club before she even told me. But you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. It's true though, it was the cupcakes. Yeah, it was the cupcakes. Oh, whoa, did I just smack the shit out of her? Kaya! I don't know where something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles out of the desk. Ow! What was... Ah! A cookie! Oh, a cookie hit her. A giant cookie wrapped in plastic. She glances around. Is, is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. Ah ha ha! I was just gonna give it to you. Then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. I was totally worth seeing your reaction though. Natsuki, that's so nice of you. Oh, but that's so nice of you. I'm so happy. She hugs the cookie. They eat it. She rapidly tears open the wrapper, takes a big bite. She suddenly claps her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue. Oh, I thought it was like a poison cookie. Going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her cookie. Hi, ah, yours looks really good too. Can I try it? Jeez, beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. I'm still happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Don't you hate when someone gives you something? You're like, oh, yeah, will you give me some Doritos? And they come back with like nacho cheese Doritos and not Cool Ranch. And you're like, oh, thanks. I mean, you're. You're techni technically right. You're technically right. You technically did a good job. Dory gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and then wraps her arms around her. Ah, oh, jeez. I get it. I get it. Cookie's still in the hand. Sunny leans down and takes a bite of Natsuki's cookie. Oh, my God. Wow. You're such a kid sometimes. And Subi glasses around. Monica isn't in the club room. Where the hell is Monica? Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. I haven't either. Hmm. It's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She is pretty, pretty popular. You don't think she has a... I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Suddenly the door swings open. I am super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Yeah, Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. But 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 boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh oh. Ah, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. That makes no sense though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I don't really, I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us. She just said she just started, guys. Jesus Christ. Yeah. The further into the chair I sink. I should have played this game earlier. I don't know how long this game is going to last, but if this goes to like four in the morning, I'm going to be like, <sighs> yeah. Maybe once I a little, get a little bit better. It's, it's just wearing me out to talk like this. My neck's dissolved. Oh, I'm just in like full, like I'm taking advantage of the full lean that this has. That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Pooh. Monica smiles sweetly. Aha. I didn't mean to put any pressure on you. You've been practicing a lot recently, and I love the chance to share when I'm ready. Didn't miss anything, did I? Not really. I choose to leave out the escapades. Looks like everyone's already settled down. 
Sayori has already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back with her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Man. Looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down to the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related? Feeling a little too tired to read. Same. I could probably fall asleep right now. Same. I close my eyes and end up listening. Yeah. <laughs> Bruh, same. <laughs> Yeah, I'll speed run this next. We're probably going to seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Uh, thanks, Lake Tahoe Foot Finder. Thank you, ZJ Player. That's awesome. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know? We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Eh, what do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, no one will ever come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up. After they come, we can do the things speak to our creative minds. What's this? It's rare to see her deliberately talking like this. That's such a good point. In that case, do you think the food will do the trick? I guess we- Cupcakes! We could bring cupcakes! Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. This is so good. Cupcakes. Cupcakes it is then. Thank God. Cupcakes. I'm hungry. For cupcakes. You know what I like is cupcakes no frosting, chat. Yeah. I kind of hate frosting, but I kind of love cake. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all. Sayori can put her mind, stuff, make things come to life, blah, blah, blah. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Oh, God. I open my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't napping club. Ooh. Does our school have one? How did we get to this game? I've owed this game for two years now. This is, this is, I, this was a. This is a game that I owed. Dude, I've been, this has been going on forever. Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know? You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true though. Yeah. Subathon incentive from two ones. Trust chat? I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. It's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh, not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's it's a secret. I knew it. Oh, I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Sayori glances around herself. How is it written all over me? You're clearly in a rush this morning. Your hair is sticking out all around. Dude, just shading her. I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Oh! <gasps> Romantically. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either, and there's toothpaste stain on your collar right there. Jesus Christ. There is no gameplay, Daffy No Ducks. This game blew your mind. <laughs> Nobody's gonna tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you, but I don't care about that. You're a meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up? Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Oh my god, Jesus Christ. 
That's super mean. Sorry, but you thank me later. I started to button her blazer from the bottom. Okay, that's sexual. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Okay, this is incredibly awkward for me. This is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Eh, don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it. It's stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? It did when I bought it. If you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it didn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. Don't say that out loud. Anyway, you look much better now. My boobs are bigger. So stuffy. It's not worth it all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. That's so much better. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me for better than anyone else could anyway. That's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Jeez. Anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed. Fine, fine. It's a deal. Yeah, why did this game have so many warnings before it? The only anxiety I'm getting is is that is that I don't really enjoy talking about boobs in a classroom. That's the only anxiety I get. As a grown man, I don't really enjoy doing that on the internet. That's giving me anxiety. Maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Ah, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote? Can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I failed to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori trots away to receive, retrieve her poem. Let's go to Natsuki first. Well, it's not terrible, but it's pretty disappointing after your last one. Then again, if this was as good as last one, I'd be completely pissed. Well, I guess I wanted to try something different this time. Fair enough, you're still new to this, so I expect you to suck. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Well, yeah, yeah I guess you've been friends with her so long, y'all might be on the same wavelength. She never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but how can someone so fluffy spend so much time with you? It's like dragging around dead weight. Jesus Christ. If it weren't for me, she probably would just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You'd say we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Why does Natsuki woke up? She woke up. Went to went to her bathroom, brushed her teeth, went downstairs, looked in her fridge, took out uh, a glass of Haterade, put it in the microwave, and drank that bitch. Warm glass of Haterade this morning. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? She, Amy likes spiders. Icky, wiggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I think she's a cunt. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. She likes spiders, and that's why I think she's... No, that's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. So I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. Whatever her friends start to like spiders too. That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. What the fuck? Not bad, right? 
Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. Honestly, though, spider people are weird. All right, listen, listen. I'm just going to say this. No disrespect to any of you. I'm sure you all are fine people. But if you're spider people or if you're snake people, like big snake people, not like a little snake, but like big snake people. I don't know. What about Spider-Man? Mm, maybe. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward to this poem. Like, if you're letting spiders bite you, if you're, like, putting a spider in the microwave and pulling it out, letting it bite you, hoping you'll become a radioactive Spider-Man, that makes sense. Yeah. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain the complicated issues, much simpler analogies, and it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyway, would anyone agree the subject of this poem is an ignorant shirt? Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of people find out. They make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for lack of weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. I'm sure a lot of other people can relate to it too. Well, I didn't get that. That's what you were trying to convey. You want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. Remember that. Okay. I remember that. Oh my goodness. This is so good, Pooh. Eh? I love it. Especially after yesterday's poem. Huh? You're too honest sometimes, Sayori. No, but really. I want to put this on my wall. Can I? Yep, you can have it. Yep, you can have it. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why, because I have no idea what I like either. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this, maybe even Atsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Yeah, this is killing me. Listen, I wrote a poem. I wrote a great poem. She can feel my feelings in it. She hugs this sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. Well, I'm not good at figuring out if poems are good or bad, but that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm sure that's exactly how it works. And again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole damn thing. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Well, I should at least try to give it some thought. Aw, uh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try and keep that in mind. Eh, well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm, I guess I like happy poems. Sometimes I like sad poems. Sometimes I like a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yes! I like things that are happy and sad. Yeah, happy and sad. I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. I am. I'm thinking about my life decisions. This has been two hours already, chat, of this game. I've been playing this game for two hours. I could have fucking done 42 runs of Baltro. Fuck me in the dong balls, dude. Sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem, give a rain cloud a little hug. Make a nice happy rainbow. Maybe I'm getting uh, my feelings after all. I should go write them down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Let me write your fucking poem. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingling. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. In bottles all in a row. 
My collection makes me a lot of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave. Discovering the secret, hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other. Holding them out, each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading something, but all I hear is echo, echo, echo inside my head. Holy crap, did you write this? Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but, I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. She's been really in touch with her feelings recently. Oh my god. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. Point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. I feel like I feel like this was, was meant to express me. Ah, it even helps me understand my own feelings. Writing's like magic. Pretty passionate, aren't you, bitch? I hope you keep it up. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Dory's always had a habit of getting so something before dropping in a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. Yo, Chop feel that. I love getting obsessed with things and then dropping in a week later. Like my life. Let's see what you have written today. Mm -hmm. Well done, boy. Your skills are already improving. Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Uh huh. It's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I'm so good at this. I know yours isn't perfect, don't worry, mine is so good, I'll show you mine. Metaphors are so good, they're really good, you should use a metaphor. Like, instead of just saying it's raining, you say, like tears flowing down a cheek, dropping onto the floor into a puddle of God, the God's tears. Try letting your mind water through your feelings and write down things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate experience. Ah, yes. What an interesting technique. I can feel myself. I can feel myself. Have y'all ever been with someone that you thought was pretty and is just not interesting at all and you're trying so hard? But you're slowly getting less attracted to them as they talk? <laughs> Like slowly, you're like, oh no, it's just, it's going away. It's going away. Well, an example of that. Now I know part of this is my fault since I've made up Yuri's voice here and her entire attitude pretty much, but I feel like she's kind of a see you next Tuesday. Well, an example of that, if you'd like to read it, of course, is this poem you wrote for today. That was your type in high school? Well, everyone's like that in high school. They're all horrible, everyone's horrible people. Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside the window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed the strange tendencies as a wandering human. Wandering human? Wandering, ordinary? Unordinary? Unordinary human? I just said wandering at first. Yeah. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that that raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its, its place and reflects that much more light off the cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken a following to me. 
You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry and more frequently, so my bread always handy. Every time I bandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows his excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlonia conditioning. I slice the bread. And I feed myself again. You were a little more daring with this one than yesterday? Yeah, I see that. A lot more metaphorical. I don't know if this is my fault, but I can't even imagine what this poem is about. This poem is about just like being a dick to a raccoon. A bit closer to my preferred writing style. Were you actually doing this to the raccoon? Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery? Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge my more unusual hobbies. So those sort of things that I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. Did Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Uh, she did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody? She, she's right. Does she really feel that way? Sounds like you two have that in common. Yeah, but that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. Please don't tell her I said that. Don't worry, we're in a small classroom. It's completely empty. I'm sure no one else can hear you. Conversation is so private. Yes. Oh, Monica. Monica, what is going on? What is with all these bitches? Monica, I think some of these girls are going crazy. All right, Monica, I just gotta be real. Like, I think, I think, I think Yuri's torturing a raccoon. Yeah. But why are we worried about my poem? Yuri is torturing a raccoon. Wanna share what we wrote today? Sure, here you go. I gave my poem to Monica. All right, I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had these sort of things in common. Ah, well, maybe good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Not the raccoon. And why? thank you so much. JR, thank you so much for the subs. Maybe that's the case, but maybe there's also similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you, it sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you think. So I think the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. You sure you're not reading into it too much? Uh -huh, I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Yuri's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. You don't fire like that. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions, like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone is so happy would enjoy sad things too? And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. But anyway, yes, let me read your poem. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violet, grating waveform, squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Ugh. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. What? Cacophony? Cacophony? Load me. No, I never said I don't like the way she writes. It's just kind of a thing I've never seen before. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of a poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote these lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. Um, I love when people are really into their hobbies. But I don't necessarily always want to talk to him about him. It's a little hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Sometimes asking him what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression or feeling, or a conversation with the reader. 
So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind or when something unexpected might happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? Oh, okay. What am I even talking about? Ah, that's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone can come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? We're sort of. Do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put anything together in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves. That is my concern, too. I don't really don't want to do good with last-minute preparations. We're going to keep it simple. We won't need much more than a few decorations. We've got some posters, some pamphlets. That's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. I thought you heard. We're going to be performing. We're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us is going to choose a poem to perform. Oh, my. Oh. Oh, no. Don't do this. Don't do this. We're also going to let anyone come up and recite poems, too? Oh, that's, this is a horrible idea. See where he's putting all the, it all in the posters? Oh, God. This is a horrible idea. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know? I agree, Suki. I, I never in my life could do something like this. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, I understand where they're coming from. Remember, they've never shared anyone until just now. It's a lot to ask people to recite their poems out loud in front of a room full of people. I didn't even think about that. I'm sorry. But I still think we should try. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, and it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better it will be to show everyone what literature is all about. About expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. By the same feelings you brought him here in the first place. I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes standing in front of the room for two minutes or setting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Is this whole thing just like a, is like the internet come together and they just like meme on everyone? Like, oh yeah, do this game. It's super, super yeah. No. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looked like Natsuki didn't have any argument. I'm trying to think of, like, something like that. Like, am I... Do I have to get in on the internet meme now? You know what I mean? Uh... Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right. All right. What about you, Yuri? You gotta do it, Yuri. I guess I don't really have a choice. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of, well, the death of me. Oh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem. You're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? Of course. Now let's see. Monica flipped through her notebook. She stands by the podium. Title of this is The Way We Fly. Ahem. Clear common voice fills the room. More than that, her inflections is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line, bringing the worst to life. Is this something she's done before? She's simply a natural. I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Theory looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. Four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica. Ah, thank you very much. 
I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I'll go next. Yuri's fired up. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Yeah. These girls need more STEM-heavy curriculum. <laughs> this poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's, oh, it's called After Marriage of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? She gets past the first couple of lines. Her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transformed into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure, and she enunciates perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as even bewildered herself. I? It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applauded, she held her poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. I'm next. Go, Sayori. This one's called My Meadow. Sorry, I giggled. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easy? Try not to think of it like you're reciting. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself in front of a mirror in your own head. Or everyone's just naked. I see, I see. Okay, then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice is made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from her voice gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what she meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew and through. And through. Okay. I did it. Good job, Sayori. Even Pooh liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that mean? It came out nicely. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poem of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as I don't, well. Wouldn't work at all. We might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. That's well, I've been practicing for that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. Next time, I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna make you pick a poem that challenges everyone. We don't have much time before the festival. This is the longest club meeting ever. Okay, the longest club. Natsuki, it's fine. It's fine. I'm. I might as well get over it. But it's not like I have much selection to read. I'll just go with what I wrote today. I stand up in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Because I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. But that once I finish, I receive applaud anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Dubstitch. That was the funniest casual misogyny I've seen in chat. Sorry, I'm not really good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in writing. That's something gonna improve over time, though. All right, then, that just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. Podium. Sorry, Chad, I gotta stand up for a minute. The podium is called, it's called, Why Are You All Looking At Me? Because you're presenting. Hmph. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting her poem, her sour attitude disappears. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and a rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Oh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to go recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put it on whichever face I want for other people. When it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. Ch chat. 
I've never felt something so hit me so hard in a video game like that. So true for me. How long have I been playing this? Like four hours. Well, that's just how it is. Well, I guess that's the case. You won't have much to worry about in the festival. I feel like I feel like what I should have done. If I really realized what I should have done is I should have just done a live action version of this. I'm gonna hire four girls and me. We're gonna do a live action real version of this and let chat pick everything. Yeah. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that all of you have an idea of what's it like now. Make sure you pick a poem. Like a reading. Like, you know, one person reads, the next person reads. Let me make you pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time of what you'll be reciting. Jeez! I should probably find some other poems to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Nah, no problem. Okay, everyone. That's about it for today. All right. Yay, we're going to write poems for tomorrow, too. Awesome. No way you'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll try my best to get through it for the sake of the club. And impressing Monica. Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Hee hee. Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. Must be a little nice, though. How am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Pooh. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to, I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. Let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot. You think it's time to give up? This is as bad as you think it is? This is horrible? Um, Kool-Aid man. Go run into a wall. Um, this is really hard because I, I hate everything about Yuri, but I'm pretty sure she's going to let me hit it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I just feel like... I feel like... I feel like I would... I feel like now... Now... Third, you know, me... You know, knowing what I know now about life... I would probably walk home with Sayori. However... In role play, in full role play, chat. I'd be, I, yeah, I'd, I'd walk home with Yuri. Uh, I'd probably walk home with Yuri because, you know, boop. Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so. Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. Ah, oh, you admitted it. Jeez. There's not even a point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. 
Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm, if you say so. Conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward, but it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her, but it's something that makes her happy. I would hate to take her away from that. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? All right. I'm going to write another poem here, chat. I am beginning to despise this game. Um, I am going to have to whisper on my flight because of all of the voice acting that I've been doing today. Uh, sadly, I am uh, taking very little pleasure so far in this. And it's uh, leaving me with a bit of imagination. Or sadness, sorry. Sadness. Um, however, I would like to create a romance with one of these women at this point because they all wear short skirts. Um, this is probably this whole idea of doing a 24 hour stream before a 16 hour flight, thus making myself have a 40 hour day essentially, probably gonna land me in a graveyard. Um, I'm definitely gonna feel lazy for a little bit after that, but hopefully tomorrow when I'm flying, uh, I it will be to make some wonderful memories. Oh, yes. <laughs> Their uh, life, my life has been a bit of a whirlwind here in March, and I fear that I'm going to have one of my lowest sub months ever because I have anxiety about that, and it gives me misery when I worry about all the traveling that I do from time to time. Um, however, I also get really big excitement when I get to do these events and meet all the people that I get to see at them, uh, such as speedrun sessions. Um, sometimes I get an uncontrollable urge to just like jump up and down so that way I don't lose all my energy uh, however that's not really cute mm -hmm. I'm pouting right now that I have to finish this game and I believe this is proof uh, that the humanity is hopeless. Um, I'm going to Dubai for a Red Bull gamer retreat. Yeah. No, it's for a Red Bull. They're bringing, like, Amza and, uh, like, all the Red Bull gamers from all over the world, like, Bonchin and Diego will be there. Um... Amza's, Amza, I know, is going. Chat, Amza's going. Okay, chat, Amza, if you, if you know who Amza is, okay? Like, if you know who Amza is and you know who me, who I am, like, us having a picture together is probably, like, one of the funniest pictures you could have. Because Amza is someone whose whole career involves not putting Yoshi into a pit. And I'm someone whose whole career involves putting Yoshi into a pit. You know? It's a lot of irony. I'm just saying. Why did... Uh, I, that's where Red Bull picked it. Uh, it's easy for everyone to travel to. Like, it's easy for everyone in the world to travel to. Because um, you can just fly in and out of there. Um, and I think there's also a lot of stuff. I also think probably, like whatever region took it on was going to have to have the budget for it, you know what I mean? And I think they have a probably a pretty decent budget there. London's easier? For who? For who? People in Japan? Be easier for me. It would have been way really easier for me. Oh, God, it would have been so much easier for me. Yeah, I mean, for who? For the infrastructure, for everything they want to do? Uh, would London have been easier to drive doom buggies in the desert? I don't know, man. 
Yeah, you, I, yeah. You know what? You know what? You know what? London is easier, guy. You know what? You take that up. You you call you call them up and you be like, hey man, you could have fucking done it here in London, mate. Why are you going to Dubai, in it? I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah, I was. Aha, you must have a lot of determination. Oh, he could have been in London and it might. What's the weather like in London right now? Yeah, what's the weather like in London this very moment? What's it gonna be? What's the high in London today? Rainy. Shut up. I'd have rather, I would have, I would have rather done it in, <laughs> I mean, honestly, doing it in Florida, probably the same type of laws of doing it in Dubai. Yeah. Um, always assume it's raining. 41 degrees. Okay, well, that's why we didn't do it there. Staring at this club and now picking up piano. Maybe not determination. I paired, I packed one pair of pants. <gasps> Did I remember a pair of pants? Shit, I don't know if I packed a pair of pants. Shit. I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out with the festival too. I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Eh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday? Well, yeah, I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they have fried squid? Squid, that's a, oh, squid, that's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on, are you saying you don't like squid? Look at you, you of all people, you don't like squid? I know you like tentacles. Yeah, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Mon Ika. <laughs> That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that, Jake ma that joke makes no sense in translation. Ah, oh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? You definitely fancy Yuri. Are you one of those guys who likes abusive women? I, I get it. I get it. Your reactions aren't as funny as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. <laughs> I want a, I want a, I want a nice bossy woman, not a mean bossy woman. Excuse me, where is Sayori anyway? Also, I hope now whenever you hear Yuri's voice, you hear me. Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at the desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Ah, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? huh? Is everything all right? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? Just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you're so much to worry about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. I totally believe her. Don't let me distract you from having fun. Well, all right, if you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back toward everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Mon Ika if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Mon Ika, who's shuffling through some papers at her desk. Who? What's up? This might sound a little strange, but... Have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? What way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading too much, but she seems a little downcast. Oh, you think so? Can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe something's out of mind, but I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Pooh. You certainly know a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She always talks to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to know if you knew anything. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And also I care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. She seemed like she wanted to be left alone, so maybe don't do that. Maybe she has a hard time bringing up a person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you. 
Who? Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sarah already talks about you more than anything else, you know? And she's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. We're literally talking about how she's sad right now. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? 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 Oh, dude, I, I'll never tell a waiter that something, something, like, I would never send my food back. I'm so terrified of ever doing that. Yeah, I need a strong woman to be like, mm-mm, he doesn't like the chocolate. I'll, I'll look at a menu, I'll be like, oh, I really want that, but I hate mushrooms, and I'll just be like, I'll just pick them off. Yeah. Sayori is always like that. She's, she's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different than it's always been. E -e -e -e, you're so funny, Pooh. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her so cheerful? Because that's just how she is around you. I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, just forget it. I'll try to talk to her, so don't think about it now. All right, Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it. I know there won't be like that. Blah, 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 blah. She's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. There's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Hey, you. Eh? I look up to see Natsuki next to me. Are you just gonna keep, sit there and keep staring at nothing? There isn't much time. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to make you wary or anything. It's not like I'm worried. I was just... Natsuki glances down at her side. She's holding a volume of magenta in her hand. That's right. Something just came up for a minute. But we can get started now. I won't make you wait any longer. Awesome. Jeez, now you're making me feel like a jerk. If something's bothering you, then you can just tell me to leave it alone. I will. I mean, assuming you didn't feel like talking about it or anything. She practically mumbles that last part. Nah, I'm probably making it seem like a bigger deal than it is. We're just thinking about Sayori. Sayori? Thinking, of, thinking about her? Yeah, she seems pretty down today. She didn't want to admit it to me, so I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh, Natsuki exhales. But first of all, you should really work on your phrasing. But anyway, you're her best friend, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Then in that case, I think you should trust her a little bit more. If she needed you, then you would be the first person she'd go to. Well, I guess that's true. I mean, some people just have those days. You can't always avoid it. Eh, true. If anything, she probably doesn't want you to worry about her because it's not important. Yeah, that's kind of what she said to me. Maybe it's not right for me to go against her wishes. Exactly. If she needs you to worry about her, then it'll be a lot more obvious. Oh, I should have thought of it that way from the start. And Sugi fiddles with a book she's holding in her hands. She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Don't get the wrong idea or anything. We've just been friends for a long time. It's normal to be worried about your friends. Uh, I mean, you were, you were worried about me, so... I was not. Jeez, if you're fine, then let's just hurry up and get started already. Yeah, yeah. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls. Let's share our poems. Before I know it, everything's back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poem. I make an eye contact with S Monica. She smiles at me. Let's go to Yuri first. Well, Dumpu, you've definitely improved your writing over the course of the few days. Has my advice been helpful to you? Definitely. I'm so glad. Sharing our writing like this is a lot more fun and rewarding than I anticipated. I need to remember to thank Monica. I think after I all felt a little awkward, but now it seems like everyone is enjoying sharing their writing. I can't disagree with that. I was afraid this whole thing would be a chore, but it's a great way for me to spend some personal time with all the girls in the club. <laughs> It's fun to get to know everyone through their writing, and I guess doing some writing myself. 
Have you learned anything about yourself, Boo? Well, you know, I like to say that writing is very personal way to... Oh, wait. And then it doesn't matter if you're a good writer or a bad writer. And even my opinions are some my opinions, you know? As oh. always, I believe what's most important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. I'm kind of afraid or disappointing and disappointing you in some way or another. Always writing all right? Well, you're always sophisticated with your Dude, we scale now. Have fun editing this fucking shit. You have to make a video of this now. I don't give a fuck. You have to. No, I've never played this fucking shit before. You're always sophisticated with your writing and most advice to share. Is that so? Yuri thinks for a good minute. That must be terrible. Eh? Ready to become someone who feels so unlikable of me. Yeah, I just mumbled. It's not as bad as you're making it sound in your head. It just meant that I respect your opinion. I see. I'm sorry that I always overthink and come to these sort of conclusions. It's just I'm a little too used to it. Over overthinking? Being disliked. Yuri. What am I saying? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up. Let's move on. All right. You want to share your poem now? Okay, here. Beach. A marvel, million years in the making, where the womb of Earth chaotically meets the surface. Under a clear blue sky, an expanse of bliss. But beneath gray rolling clouds, an endless enigma. The easiest world to get lost in is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sandcastle where the sand is wet, but where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same, yet we still build sandcastles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish in the sand. The salty air is therapeutic, the breeze is gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foaming tendrils. Turn back, and I abandon my place to a road to the shore. Drift forward, and I return to Earth forevermore. Mm, listen. You gonna steal Edgar Allan Poe's lines much? Evermore? Psh. I'm aware that the beach is kind of an insane thing to write about, but I did my best to take a metaphorical approach. You say that like you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard? After yesterday, Natsuki and I, well... It was amusing that we wrote something similar in such different ways. So Natsuki wanted to write about the same topics as each other again. It's supposed to be better to compare the differences in our writing styles. Or thought processes. It was her idea, knowing her, it's no surprise she wanted to write about the beach, the cute little bitch. She probably just wants to show off. Oh! Where did I just go? I just dropped something. Oh. Yuri, best girl? It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style, I just went with a request, but. I suppose it's not so bad to write about something so simple. It can be refreshing, you know. Good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yes, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. I am so hoping my wife and kid are asleep right now and they are not hearing me do this. Chat, you're not allowed to uh, we're you're not allowed to clip any of this fucking stream. And now. You're not allowed to clip a goddamn fucking moment, okay? Not a fucking moment. I've got to, I really have to pee. I have to pee. I have to get some water. Okay? Yeah. I have to get some water. And pee. Am I going are, am I going to voice over for visual novels? I just want to voice over in a game. Yep. All right. I'll be right back. Okay, chat. I'm back. I'm back. We're good. We're good. Are you guys? I'm awake. Oh no, I wasn't. I just I, I had to get some fresh air. I had to zonk myself. I did. I had to zonk myself. Good. 
Was it a good poo? No, I just had to fucking, I had to go outside and just like, wake up. I'm asking like a lot of dirty shit. He's back in action, quick vibe check. Practice my Yuri voice. <laughs> Sayori. This is your best one so far. It's really nice, Pooh. Er, thanks. Sayori, you've been a little quiet today. Is everything all right? Yeah, of course. Everything is fine. Maybe I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Do you want a nap or something? No, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I only want to see smiles on your face. Well, all right. Hey, Pooh. I'm still a little surprised. I really thought, I really thought you're writing, try your writing process in the way. I really thought that you would try writing your poems like the way Yuri does, or even Atsuki. But in the end, yeah, I guess you're the one who likes this one the most. Why? You don't want to get closer with everyone else? Wait, of course I do. That doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sayori. You know I have to sometimes put up with me. I know you have to sometimes put up with me. And I have to sometimes put up with you. But we have a wavelength or something. And this is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the only exciting thing in my life. But sometimes it's just easier to write when I'm thinking about you. Sayori? No, no, Pooh. I don't deserve this. You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? So you guys have trouble keeping your voice steady all of a sudden. If you had fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori. I glance around the room to make sure nobody has noticed this. Sayori. I probably never said this before, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me what will cheer you up. Sayori shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself and puts on a smile. It's nothing, Pooh. It's just a little rain cloud. Sorry you had to see that. I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone. That's all that matters. Go play. I'm going to go home a little bit early today. Sayori. Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. Sorry, I got to shut my door so I don't wake my family. voice acting this one's all right all right well yeah about as good as yesterday's anyway i see what you're going for but it's just not really my style i mean that's fine and all i'm mostly just glad that you're trying a little bit well of course i'm at least trying why are you so why are you so emotionally invested in my poems anyway isn't that more of a compliment to me Eh. No, gross. It's not like I care. It's just that one of us in this club has to make sure you're not slacking off. Really? Well, what if you ended up just scaring me away? That's, um... It's not like you would actually do that. Yeah, you're right. Kind of fun to hang out here, even if I have to put up with you. Grrr. Her elbow connects to my stomach. Oh? Maybe I won't mind scaring you away after all. I, I was just joking. Oh, I know. Don't worry. I was too. Flirt, flirt, flirt. Flirt, flirt, flirt. How the hell do you call that a joke? That seriously hurt. Well, maybe it was funny to her. I guess that's kind of the point. I should really just watch my mouth around Atsuki. Anyway, holds the poem out like nothing even happened. I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles the brilliant light. The walls in your mind will welt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand. Bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea. And let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail, set you free in my windy sail, and remember the reasons you're so wonderful when you press your lips to mine. 
I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way that thought had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. Why didn't you bring it at the end? Fuck it. God damn it, Natsuki. Dating sim? We haven't dated shit yet, Caitlin. All we're, this is a poem writing fucking sim. I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I'm gonna write a nice message. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kind of hard to write anything negative about the beach. Yuri's take on it was a little more solemn. Well, that's... She better not have said anything bad about mine, that fucking cunt. After all, she was the one who wanted us to write about the same topic. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ugh, you can really see her doing that, too. Making us write about a simple topic and trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. It's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up getting kind of metaphorical, too. But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. One of those two ladies is lying. All right, Monica, what up, girl? Hi, Pooh. Have you thought about what you want to submit to for the festival? Well, being this club is one thing, performing in front of a bunch of people. I have to give it some more thought. No pressure, no pressure, but whatever you do, it's gonna turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. Anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. It's pretty good. Makes me think of Sayori, like the other one that she wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. That's kind of exaggerating it. You're probably like Batman and peanut butter. But you do spend a lot of time with her even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I'm not shy, it's just, haha, I'm just teasing. I know it takes a little bit of time to make friends with everyone. But Yuri and Itsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them a share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then too. I'm not like unapproachable or anything, am I? Ah, oh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. Really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, all right. Anyway, I'll show you my poem now. Give it to me. The lady who knows everything. An old tale of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather. Lost adrift in the sky, victim of the currents of wind. Day after day, I search. I search with little hope knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmingly in the twilight sky. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall and fall and fall and fall even more. Gentle as a feather. A dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no, one to, no end to her gaze. The lady knows everything, knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose. And we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with that breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. Okay, you're a feather. I like Sabrina Carpenter's feather. Yeah, she really, she really went all out on this one. Batman and peanut butter. I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sort of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. Sounds like chat GPT stuff. This game was made in 2018 before ChatGPT. I never really put my thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Chat, can I tell you a story about this game? Hold on, let me finish this conversation. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you know that better than anyone. 
You mean one dimensional? Ah, yeah, that. Anyway, here's my Monica writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It'd be really disheartening to get lukewarm response to something you put so much into. <clears throat> YouTube. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing it becomes a lot easier because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way and it'll make you want to continue improving. It's almost like, like having your own little literature club. That's my advice for today. All right, okay, you three, we're all done sharing poems, right? Thank God. Hold on a second. Is it just me or did you say something strange just now? Eh? Huh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's that's right. You deviated from a usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez, why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Uh-oh. That needing air has come foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Oh, yeah, she's gone. It seems you're right. Sigh. Sayori is helping to lighten the mood, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to? Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Everybody pees. Everyone she went to field home. She went early. Is that so? I hope she's all right. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. We're, we're not lovey-dovey. We're friends. Second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her early today, and everything's fine. What'd she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparation, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. What are you doing? Let's see we've been making cupcakes, thank God. A lot of them, different flavors, make them all. Challenge accepted. As for yourself, printing and assembling poetry pamphlets. Fucking yeah, fuck yeah. P assemble those bitches. And uh, guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I am useless. That's not it at all, you're the most talented person we know. That Suki's fighting too. Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder when she's not around. It gets better? When does it get better? That may be the case, but if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk and focus starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. It'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Pooh, the one who is truly useless, I said. Don't say that. In fact, but Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. Ugh. I can help you out. I would be really appreciative of that. Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always dirty work I could give you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Um, if I recall Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Who may not be like... Who may not like to be around if you only make him to be a nuisance, so therefore, he may be more suited, more suited to assisting with the decorations with me. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations? Sounds like you're just making excuses for Poo to. What are you saying? It will be extremely meticulous work. And baking in? Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. And then I think it's up to Pooh to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said. I'm surprised as well. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. We just settled this already? I'm, I have to... Um, can I just help you all? 
Wait. Oh, I could pick Sayori? Yeah, I could, but I'm not going to. I'm picking Monica. Well, I guess I should probably be helping Monica. Yeah, you picked me. Hold on one second. Yeah. Monica, you're the one who needs the least help out of all of us. And, but I agree with Atsuki. Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, but you already have Sayori as well. But Pooh was the one who... That, that doesn't matter. You were the one who scared him into picking you in the first place. You're the club president, Monica. You're supposed to make responsible decisions for the club. Monica, you should not let ulterior motives interfere with this decision. Ulterior motives? What are you saying, Yuri? In fact, it sounds like you two are the ones with the ulterior motives. Excuse me? Otherwise, this wouldn't have been made into such a big deal in the first place. That's completely false, Monica. Yeah, we have a lot of work to do, you know? We wouldn't do as good a job if you make us work alone. Ah, well, maybe that's true. Think of the think of the club, Monica. If we want our event to succeed, we need to appropriately distribute our resources. Um, ah. Uh, so, are you going to do the right? Are you going to do right thing, President? Okay, okay, I get it. Sai, it's technically most logical for Pooh to help one of you two. So, I guess that's what we'll do. Okay, yeah. This is bullshit. I was trying to help Monica. I want Yuri. I'll probably be the most helpful with Yuri. Mama Mama me? Are you serious? Why would you? I hate fake choices. I can already tell you're about to say something mean. No, no. I was just saying, ugh. I'll be up. Yep, yep, yep. I'm gonna help Yuri. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm glad I have a bad habit of overthinking these things, so your assistance will be useful. Great to hear, Natsuki. You can bake yourself. You'll be fine. Everyone can tell Natsuki's feeling sour. That's everything we needed to do. You guys all excited? Yep, you guys all excited? Everyone's excited? I feel the same way. I'm excited. Everything's great. Good enough for you? Great. Natsuki, great, great, great. Why is everyone yelling at you? No one's yelling at you, Natsuki. We're just, we're, are you good? Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I am sorry for this. I don't really know why Pooh picked me. And also, the cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. Nothing I do for the event will compare, so. I get it. I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. Um, well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. You're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I know, I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Uh, we're all taken back by Yuri's words. She has trouble with words, but she's trying to cheer up someone that's really good. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori, even if it didn't work perfectly. I can tell that that's something Sayori would have said at a time like this. She helps everyone smile. Just finished chapter one of this? Chapter one? Oh! My story about this game. My story about this game. So when this game was coming out, Dan Savato put a, a Twitter, a tweet out, and he's like, hey, any of my speedrunner friends who have a YouTube want to play this game I'm working on? And I sent him a DM, and I was like, yo, bro, I, I mean, I'll totally play the game you're working on. He goes, he goes, he goes, listen, I don't mean, I don't mean this in any disrespectful way, but I think you're going to hate it. Better, I'm better better my cupcakes were a part of the whole event. I believe you. Yep, I hope to see everyone do their best, but with that, nothing more to for today. Let's head out. Let's go. Let's go. Alright, Yuri. You and me. Um I turn around. Sorry. I realize that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best, yes. Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Okay. I'll be I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. My house? 
Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought that I would be going to your house since I'm helping you. Well, I suppose that makes sense, but if you don't mind, I'd like to go to your house. All right. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decided not to press Yuri. All right, gotta clean my room. I hope I can manage to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. All right, let's go. Wait, you don't actually think that, do you? I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. For any the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But, but. Yuri thinks of herself with extremely tense expression. You're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? I didn't realize. I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? Oh, God, I hate her. I can already tell you right now, I dated a few Yuris in my life chat, okay? This passive aggressiveness. Oh, so toxic. I miss him. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I believe you. Yes. I'm really looking forward to Sunday. I am too. Have the exchange to make way out of the door and Yuri follows. All right. Can't believe this. Yuri's coming to my house on Sunday. My anxiety shoots through the roof. No telling what might end up happening when we're outside of school. More than that, she told me she was looking forward to that. Is it the chance I have to make something happen for 20? Is it too early for that? Only time will tell. This is very forward. What's he trying to make happen, bro? It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. We just sleep all through Saturday. That's what I'm trying to do tomorrow. Chat. Meanwhile, we've even been texting occasionally. Oh shit, we've been texting? But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left club. It's not like we text all the time, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? Dude, texting? Let's go visit Sayori, rather than asking I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach her house, I knock on the door. Again, we used to play so often that we made it a bit of a habit. We were simply entering each other's house like we're family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Sayori... Hi, Pooh. I sit down in her room. She forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. The minute of silence. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? I guess you're right. It's been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. I also recognize that the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. If you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come he suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Yuri had already left by the time we decided that. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Ah, yeah, that's true. What about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica? Of course! But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. So it's just me and Yuri then. Yep. Sayori so stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. Sayori so smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Pooh. Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. My mouse looks like a little tattoo on her right there. She's not okay. Yeah. Uh, I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? 
I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Terry gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Pooh. But you're wrong. Nothing happened. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> You're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Pooh? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Oh, I thought she was going to confess her love. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? You know, says I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Jesus Christ. Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy in caring and wasting having spent it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. Can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept, me, uh, kept this from me her entire life? Did she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why, Sayori? Why is it that you never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. As if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much I could do, I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little bit better for you. Why, I'm your friend. You had to tell me. You don't understand at all, Pooh. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have wasted efforts caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. Why is she smiling right now? That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get close with everyone in the club it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. You're right, that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, but I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you to stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Pooh. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could have been like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. That's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. What is... This time I pull her into a tight embrace. Pooh, Sayori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. It makes... If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. I literally understand why it's called Doki Doki Literature Club right in this exact moment. Because they're in a literature club. Is our high school named Doki Doki? But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Sayori isn't hugging me back, despite my arms being wrapped around her. Her arms are at her side. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Pooh. I. Sayori barely managed to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want her to know is that I care. If you have it in you to call me selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't tell me what you need to do. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, she puts her arm around me. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of these feelings, Pooh. The only time that I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm, and that's really scary too. Dory let me go. As she does, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um. It's what I want. I promise. I. I think that would be nice then. Yeah. 
Sayori wipes her eyes. I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this had to be the one where I had other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come help out? It would be fun. She shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good. You understand, right? It's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. I'll look forward to it. Let's go. Selby, thank you for rewarding me for this godforsaken shit. <laughs> I say goodbye to Siori and exit house on the way home. I feel uneasy. It's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri is about to come over too. I think Siori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much. We're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Y Yuri? Ah, oh, thank goodness. You're a little early. Oh, I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, no, I just got here, but I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried around my way home. Oh, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. Should be common sense to do that. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yep. At least I hope I got everything. I'm sure it will be fine. All right. I take Yuri into my room. It's spacious. I have books, which tells her I'm smart. I have a single, single uh, hanger hanging. Closet slightly opened, which lets her know I change my clothes. I have a mouse, only one monitor. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. I cleaned it before you came over, so it's very considerate. Ah, no, I would be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. Mm -hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would gladly help you clean. Ha <laughs> ha! Pick me. That would be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there. I snatch Yuri's wrist, which is in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. Wait, snatch her wrist? She put both of her hands firmly on her lap to make sure she's keeping track of them. So, um, should we get started? Uh-huh, yes. I have a few things planned that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know, food lighting, aromatherapy candles. Aromatherapy candles? Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. What? What? What, chat? You were thinking it too. Of course, you can't, you can't have guests in your home or in your place or at your festival without aromatherapy candles. Everybody knows that. And cupcakes. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Uh, intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. I is that so? This makes me feel relieved and kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be anxious. You can relax a little bit. I bought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah, like what? Let's see. Pulls out a few candles. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happened to have this in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think it would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. What's that wooden thing though? Oh, this. It's a diffuser for... Essential oils? You got aromatherapy candles and a diffuser? Bitch, like one or the other, you don't need both. How familiar am I with aroma? I'm more familiar than you are, clearly. 
I know you don't need both these things. Oh, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to positive atmosphere. Depending on the oil and herbs you choose. You know what's my favorite smell to walk into? Barbecue. You can even feel it pre-made through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Here he takes a cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. Just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to sprout through a mall hole on the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is a jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I choose jasmine for the event because it provides more relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them through through your body. You feel more rain, your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think that'll be the perfect for sharing our poems? Oh my god, let's just read these fucking poems. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper? I did. I have it over here. We're going to be using the origami paper, said Yuri, for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write different words on each paper. I need about a hundred of them. Oh, yeah? And what will those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Let me fasten the ribbon on the... Okay. Oh, so cute. So cute. I had no idea that you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose it does get a little intense. Is it just me or is she more relaxed than it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker poo. You can write it in characters you want. It'll help you once finished cutting the ribbons. Okay, sitting on the floor together, two of us get to work. I draw characters. She unravels long strings of ribbon. Reaches into her bag and pulls out a pocket knife. Eh, the knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Uh-huh. Well, embarrassed. Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know? If you promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. All right. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. I can't help it. I don't know what it is. A combination of craftsmanship and a feeling of danger, maybe? Oh, what am I saying? Please don't think it's weird. It definitely is not turning me on. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you got about sharing. Well, it's an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. Besides, it's a really cool looking knife. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. It is it a red flag or a green flag if they're into knives, Chad? I think it's kind of a red flag. Would you like to hold it? Fuck yeah, I would. Is there a weapon around? I'd like to hold it. Sure, I'll check it out. Yeah, grenade, whatever. Any sort of weapon. I want to hold it. Yeah. I don't want it to be around me, but if it is, I want to hold it. Take it and turn it around in my hands? Yeah. Feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Because I'm curious of its sharpness. Ooh, why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. I just cut myself. Shit. Shit. A small drop of blood trickles out the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. She stared at it, noticeably fidgets. That warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... Your lowers are at her face burning up. Y Yuri. That's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm so sorry. I, I, I... Sure, it was a little weird and took me by surprise, but I guess she was just trying to help, right? 
I think you're overreacting a little. She doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? All right, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. What a, that's gangster move. That's actually like a gangster move. That's a good move right there. That's Riz, I'm sorry. I, if, so, if someone pulled that with me, Rizzed up. Rizzed up. Poo, did you really just do that? Now we're even. Yuri looks at me like I did something wrong. Um, you, I mean, I kind of assaulted her hand, I guess, but... We all thought it was charming. Now, now it's a thin line, chat. Charisma and Parizan. Thin line. That's a, that's a bad 2 a.m. joke. If not for the sweet aroma of jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. I forgot to cut her finger first. You're so weird, Poo. Eh, Yuri calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? I don't think I need one, actually. It was just a tiny cut. It's already stopped bleeding. <clears throat> We're bonded by blood. We're bonded by blood and finger licking. Hot. We're going to resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. After we finish attaching the papers, the ribbons are them out side by side. It looks better than I expected. Looks great. Good thinking. Just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Okay. I like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy these paint tablets. Ah, yes, the paint tablets. One of the items Yuri asked me to buy. Six cups of water. Get those waters. Just a little bit of water. Okay, just a little bit of water. I got the six cups. Small glasses. Put them on a plate and bring them back into my room. Yuri, yes. I'm coming to see Yuri quickly, unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her arm. Ah, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Omni weapon, you're crushing. Oh, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so... Let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So, I thought we would do something simple that would look very nice. I like to paint a gradient across the banner, starting with the colors of the sunrise and daytime, then sunset and nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. Hanging on the wall behind the podium. It'll be super great. What are you going to write? Well, it'll be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me, if you say so. We're rolling out the banner. Yuri and I kneel on opposite side. She has a brush that has a few dots of color across the banner to serve as a color guide. Kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. I'm sorry if this feels too childish. Kind of fun. Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself, For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like when I can spend time with one other person, even if something simple, like reading. It doesn't matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes things a little bit nicer. I think it's all it takes for me to be happy. Even Yuri and I are quite different. I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games. We're simply sharing the experience. Thank you, Panty Hamster. But someone can make me happy. I knew you'd understand. I get it. Sometimes I like hanging out all by myself. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unexpected paintbrush. Oh, is it February 1st is over? Oh. Yeah, you're number one. 
Hey, ah, uh, sorry. Yuri reels back and I quickly lift my head in surprise. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. It just startled me. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ah, your face. There are droplets of paints on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel. Just rush out, small towel, dampen it with hot water, return to my new, kneel back down in front of her. Here. I pat Yuri's face down, neck down with a towel. Is something wrong? It's hot, I just didn't expect it. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand, but Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. Eh? Just a little longer. Feels really nice. Keep my hand still. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression before I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost lost in a daze. She breathes gently, halfway through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is it the aroma of jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Her gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist send a tingling sensation through my arm? Oh my god, and suddenly her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was a moment ago? Yuri slowly pulls away. I'm feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It's it's fine. The moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again. But her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I instantly retrieve my own hairbrush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finish filling the night sky with the white dot that looks like stars. Look at the banner as a whole. It's pretty, very, very, pretty natural looking. It came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Oh, shit. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Ah, uh, not yet. Needs to drive first. That's true, but won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here and then if you bring it in the morning, I can do the lettering in the classroom before the event starts. Is that okay? Totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything else for us to do. You say that like it's glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume you're at least enjoying yourself? Oh no, it's not that. We're just glad we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Ah, you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we'd have extra time after finishing the work. Well, Yuri thinks to herself, I think it would be too irresponsible of me to wait much longer. I am sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. The important thing is we got everything done. Yep. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all her things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I wonder why. It sounded like she really gets the opportunity to spend time with her friends in a relaxed environment. That doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Boy, once Yuri packs up, I walk her out to the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem. I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then, Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted. Because we can do this again. Whatever you want, you can come over. Or we can go out somewhere. Oh, I forgot you didn't like going out much. As a symbol over my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so. You're so very thoughtful. She takes a step closer and briefly squeezes my hand. <gasps> I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? You respond with, well, I have been thinking about you. But I don't even get a chance as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Sayori! Eh? Sayori! Hi, hi Pooh! Sayori! Just now we weren't. Hee <laughs> hee! It's okay, Pooh. I just stopped by to say hi. 
Um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm so sorry, but I'm on my way to leave. Ah, uh, really? Sorry. Cock blocked. We'll have to get together for the festival tomorrow, so that's fine. Of course, Sayori Beams. I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Sayori waves goodbye. Sayori, I thought you didn't want to come over today. Ah, well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri and how close you got to her. It makes me really happy. You've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start flowing down her face. <laughs> That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Pooh? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Dang, man. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori, what I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side. But, but, Sayori looks away. Put a hand on her shoulder. I'm scared, Pooh. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that... That I might like you more than you like me. Huh. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and I started to like you too much. I did this to myself. I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And, and... That's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. You remember how I always said, I know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, she nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need most right now. I know what you need most right now, too. Oh, and that's what I'm going to give you. Press D to give to her. This is hard because like Yuri is definitely like a hundred percent toxic and it, it would end poorly. Like she she'd like definitely fuck up your car. You know what I mean? She'd like punch you, she'd like punch you, beat you up one day, and then she'd go home and like beat up herself and then like call the cops. You know, she's like that's Yuri, right? I I like it's bad. Like Yuri's that's Yuri, okay? And, uh, Sayori is, she's nice, she's fine, she's thoughtful, she's someone who's trying to do the right thing, you know what I mean, even if, when it's really hard, um, and she's also telling me first, right, which let's be real, let's be real guys, let's be real men out there, um, all, every man out there has probably at least liked one girl because they liked them first. Right? The girl liked you first. You're like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. You're a girl and you want to talk to me? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, just, that's just the reality. This is the reality of guys. You know what I mean? Wait, you like me? Oh, I, yeah, I really like you then. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you like me? Totally. Let's do this. It, but here's the thing. You know why that's not true, though? You know why that's true, the uh, chat? And that's that's kind of okay? Because guys are attracted to everyone. We want everybody. Um, sorry, you're going to just be my dearest friend. You'll always be my dearest friend. Get wrecked. What you need most is for things to be like they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult feelings right now, but 
please trust me that I know what's best and will make you happy in the end. Promise to get things back to the way they were. I, I see. She forces a smile. Is this what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest? I should write a poem about this. Oh God, I'm about to get Taylor Swifted. Fuck. This is just my punishment, remember? For being so selfish. So please, please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I know this whole time there's no happiness down the path. That's why I came here. Just so I could get the answers I needed to hear. And the other thing, you're also right that I just want to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone, Boo. I trust you with anything, anything at all. Her smile finally breaks. All of a sudden, she turns around and drops to her knees. Ah! She screams as loudly as she can. I'm so shocked that I don't know how to react. She looks over her shoulder and flashes me one more weak smile before turning around and running off. Awkward. I'm left standing helplessly behind my house, hoping that the ring cameras didn't capture that. Nothing more I could have done. The most I could do is support her through her feelings, but I'm having so much troubles understanding them. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more, something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. I'm just going to give it everything I got, give it all of my shot, give it all that I got. Yeah. Are we still early in the game? Bro, I've been playing this game since there was 10 hours on the clock. I don't know how this could be early still. Yeah. But I consider that I screwed up a threesome. Mm. Here's the thing, though, about that. I feel like you can't really. How do you how do you swing that? How do you swing it? How do you how do you pull that? I feel like as a guy, we're like, you just have to luck right place, right time and that you can't pull that. There's no, there's no pulling that. That's a myth. Okay. As a guy, you have to just be there. That's just how it is. That's just how it is. Sayori isn't answering your phone. Yeah. Also, I'm into the girl with knives. Yeah. Yeah. I consider going to your house to wake up. Decide that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gently rolled it up. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funny enough, I probably should feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Yuri at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Pooh! The first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny. I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared to have all the poems performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. Surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. Ooh. Mean. You think that one day the important she try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. I suddenly feel awful knowing it's not really that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But... Maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. You should take a little responsibility for her, Pooh. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president after all. But I stammer, her embarrassed. Did Sayori really tell her about it that quickly? About how I basically turned down her confession? That makes me seem like the really bad guy here. But I'm the one who knows what's best for her, right? Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Eh? Monica is being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grab one of the pamphlets, lay down on the desks. 
they do look nice. Something of this will help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, you thought so. She flipped through the pages. There's poems. Uh, yay, poems. What's this? I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. Get out of my head. 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 Get out, get out of my head before I do what is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Ah. What is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Poo. What's wrong? Ah, uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else she's written. But more than that, I, I, I changed my mind. I'm going to go get Sayori. Ah, oh, well, all right. Try not to take too long. Quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. She calls out after me. Uh-huh. She calls it out after me. Who wrote this Jack Torrance? I don't know. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her, help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs, and that's what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer. She's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. Isn't that more like something a boyfriend would do? In any case, it just feels right. Outside of Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori! Wake up, dummy! There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter a room like this. I hope she doesn't sleep naked. But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Holy fuck. Holy fucking fuck shit. What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Oh my god, dude. Fuck it. This is... <laughs> uh, the sun's gonna come up for half of you. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. Just yesterday, I told her I would be there for her. I told her I know it's best and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Turning down her confession? It has to have been what pushed her over the edge. Her agonized scream still echoes in my ears. Why did I do that to her when she needed me the most? Why was I so selfish? I just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and gave her what I know she wanted out of our relationship, and I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. She's gone forever now. Nothing I can do to bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. I had only one chance, and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Oh fuck, is that, that's like insinuating like, oh, you, you could reset the game. Do the other thing. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 Never.
the fuck was that? What is this? I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is my neighbor and good friend since we were children. Not the kind of friend you never see yourself making a day, but just kind of works to know each other's so. She's going to change that, I feel. However, I just sigh in the middle of the crosswalk to catch up to me. Mornings are usually the worst, being surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to school together. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that. But I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly intent just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. There's always an anime club, but it's not like any girls would be in it anyway. School day is ordinary as ever, and before I know it, after I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs, there really aren't any that interest me, besides most would probably be too demanding for me to want to deal with. Because I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Who? Monica. Oh my goodness, I totally didn't expect to see you here. It's been a while, right? Uh, yeah, it has. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talk, but we were in the same class last year. She's the most popular girl in class, basically out of my league. So having her smile at me generally feels a little... What did you come in here for here anyway? I've just been looking for some supplies to use for my club. You know there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? You're in the debate club, right? Ah, about that. I actually quit the debate club. Really, you quit? Yeah. I can't stand the politics, feels nothing but arguing about budget. I'd rather text something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. When the Groundhog Day is going on. A literature club. Literature? That sounds kind of dull. How many members do you have so far? Uh, it's kind of embarrassing, but there's only three of us so far. It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. I can see that. It's really not boring at all, you know? Literature can be anything. Poetry? I mean, one of my members even keeps all of her uh, magentas. Uh, Mangia? Joe Manginello collection in the club room. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? So he insists that uh, Majanda is literature too. I mean, she's not wrong. Besides, a member's a member, right? Did Monica say she? Hmm. Hey, Pooh, by any chance, you still looking for a club? I guess so. In that case, is there any chance you could do me a big favor? I won't ask you to join, but if you could visit, it would make me really happy. Please? You gotta give her the please face. I guess there's, I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? You're really sweet, Pooh. You know that. It's nothing, really. Shall we go, then? I'll look for the materials another time. You're more important. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. I follow her across the school and upstairs, a section of school I rarely visit, being generally used for third-year class and activities. Full of energy, she swings open the classroom door. I'm back, and I brought a guest. Eh. Eh? A guest? Seriously, you brought a boy. Way to kill the atmosphere. Don't be mean to Suki. Anyway, welcome to the club, Pooh. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. This is so weird because I got to read all this over again, but like, and I, but now I like, I can't skip any of it now. You're Monica's boyfriend, right? Well, ha, huh? no, I'm not. Natsuki. The girl is Natsuki. I don't recognize her. Small figure makes me think she's first year. Anyway, she's energetic as usual. And this is Yuri, our vice president. It's nice to meet you. She goes comparatively more mature sure and timid. And seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. <laughs> That's so fun. I tell you what, that did wake me up, chat. 
So I ran into Pooh in a classroom and decided to come check the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica. I didn't forget that, but I just happened to run into him. In that case, in that case, I should make some tea. That would be wonderful. Yeah, let's go sit down. The girls have desks. Gary walks to the corner, opens the closet. Monica's in Suki. Still feeling awkward, I sit next to Monica. So, I know you didn't really plan on coming here, but make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the literature club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. Put it that way, not many people are very interested in putting out all effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. Yeah. <laughs> you have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can really glow this club before we graduate. Well, I guess. There's different girls all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard to find, to find these two. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places tea in front of everyone. Keep a whole tea set in this classroom. We've had this conversation. Don't let yourself get intimidated. She's trying to impress you. Yuri looks away. Does that thing. Tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but at least I enjoy tea. I am so glad. She faintly smiles to herself in relief. But what kind of books do you like to read? Ah, well, considering how little I've read these past few years, I really don't have a good way of answering that. Um, I like to read, uh, Maggie's. I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head perks up like she wants to say something, but she shuts the fuck up. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her fingers. My favorites are usually novels that build deep, complex fantasy worlds. Level of creativity and cast measures are blind. Okay, 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 okay. Yep, she's passionate. Yep, she likes stories with deep psychological stuff. She read a horror book. Yep. Oh, is that so? Story makes you think or takes me to another world. She can't put it down. She likes horror. Natsuki hates horror. Natsuki's eyes dart over. She likes cute things. Left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. You're working on a poem called Don't Say It Out Loud and Give That Back. Natsuki, you write poems? Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No! Atsuki adverts her eyes. You wouldn't like him. Ah, not a very confident writer yet. Oh man, shade. Nagging. I understand how she feels. Sharing is more than confidence. Do you have any writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example to help her feel comfortable to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. We all sit in silence for a moment. Jeez, I'm just throwing digs right now. Yeah. I, I just got an idea. How about this? Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. The next time we meet, we'll share them with each other. Okay. All right, love it. I mean, I thought it was a good idea. Okay. Love. Can't wait. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good step for us to take. I agree. Let's do it. What's the other problem? Now that we've reached the most important topic, I bluntly come forward with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Monica may have convinced me to stop by, but I didn't say I'd make my decision. I still have other clubs to look at. I lose my train of thought. All the girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But I'm sorry, I thought. Hmm. Huh. Uh, the girls exchange glances before Monica turns back at me. I guess I need to tell you the truth, Pooh. The thing is... We don't have enough members yet to form an official club. We need four. I've been trying really, really hard to find new members, and we don't find one more before the festival. 
I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear decision when it's like this? I'd feel terrible letting everyone down. And this club kicks ass. Let's write some poems so I can mac on these, these bitches. I'm gonna join the literature club. Didn't they have a fourth before? Yeah, but she's kind of, um... I kind of feel like Monica killed her, honestly, more than she did herself. She's just hanging out. That's not cool. Yeah. It's like Monica is so nonchalant about things. Could be fun, right? You really did scare me for a moment. I mean, if you really just left all this, I would be super pissed. Ooh, I'm so happy we can become a fish club now. Thank you so much for this. You're really amazing. I'll do everything I can to give you a great time. Okay, everyone. I think that we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Write a poem. Who I look forward... Okay, yeah. Yep. Let's... I guess I'll be on my way then. Okay, let's impress Monica. Okay. Go home, our part club, my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls. They'd really be happy spending every day after school in the literature club. Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Yep. Let's write our poem. Are we really gonna have to write and do all this poem shit again? I have, yes, I would like to read a special poem. I can't convince myself to go to therapy when I'm the happiest I've ever been. I'd rather keep this up until I blow my cover and someone takes me to the emergency room. What the fuck, man? Unstable. Unstable. Romance. Sorry. Uh, this game is making me unstable, and I miss- I thought it was going to be about romance. This game is actually extremely dark. Um, and agonizing. Um, however, however, I will say, um, the last 15, 10 minutes has been pretty extraordinary. And all of a sudden, I feel like, you know, fireworks went off because I'm not sleepy anymore. Um, I can tell that a lot of passion went into this, um, and I'm skeptical that what I saw was in fact a suicide. Um, I hope we don't visit any graveyards, um, and I just really like bubbles. <laughs> uh, vitality is important in Elden Ring. I got vertigo the other day. I would love some candy right now. I want to get a puppy, a new puppy. Um, but don't tell my wife that I want that. I'm glad I played this at night because it's a horror game. Um, I'm having a fantasy because I've been up for so much time. Uh, I need to... Do, 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 do. Rainbows are cool. I got sorry, chat. I'm losing it. Uh, massacre. The fuck is happening now? Hi again, glad to see you didn't run away on us. Nah, don't worry, this might be a little strange for me, but at least I kept my word. Thanks, useless loot. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in and everybody else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise. I hope this isn't too overwhelming a commitment for you. Make sure you dive at first into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Like you deserved any slack? You already had to be dragged here by Monica. The plan is just coming out. That is my plan. You have a big mouth for someone that keeps a magenta collection in their club room. <laughs> what is happening now? 
I'm sorry, Pooh. We'll make sure to put uh, your comfort first, okay? Yuri shoots in Suki with a dis disappointed glance. Um, anyway, now that you're in the club and all, perhaps you might have interest in picking up a book to read. Well, I can't really say no either way. Like you said, I'm in this club now, so it only feels right for me to do something like that if you ask. Wait, I didn't mean like that. If you don't really want to, then forget I said anything. No, it's not that, Yuri. I want to be a part of this club, so even if I don't read often, I'd be happy to pick up a book if you wanted me to. I just feel like, well, as vice president and all, that I should keep you, get you started on something that you might like. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read to keep your attention, and we could, you know, discuss it if you want to. How does this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like despite me not reading much. Enthusiastically take the book. We flirt. I'm looking forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. That doesn't seem to be the case. Yuri's face is buried in a book. Meanwhile, she's rummaging around in the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more, but at the same time, I'd feel bad for distracting her from reading. Catch a glimpse of the cover of the book. It looks like the same book she lent me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah, crap. And she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me, and her eyes meet for a split second. That only makes her hide her face deeper in the book. Sorry, I was just spacing out. It's fine. If I was focused on it, I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. I'm just rereading a bit of this. It's... That's a book you gave me. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious how come you have two copies? I stopped at the bookstore yesterday. Oh, that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. There's something fairly obvious that Yuri isn't telling me. Definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's very engaging. That's so. What's the story about anyway? Well, um, I look at the cover of the book. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an anonymous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Basically, it's about this a religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison. And then people trapped there have this trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood. The facility gets even worse and they start selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs and affixing them to... Spoiler. Okay. You know First Man Crafty and Lysol? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a weird book. That's kind of dark, is it? That's kind of like that's kind of like Gun Dog, honestly, chat. You're not a fan of that sort of thing. Gun Dog, Gun Dog's like a PG-13 version of that. I hope so. Uh, Yuri is into things. She's shy and inclusive, but her mind seems completely different. It's the kind of challenges you look at life from a strange new perspective. And horrible things happen not just because someone wants to be evil, but because the world is full of horrible people and we're all worthless anyway, then suddenly... Don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's all right then, but I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, my whole body gets in... I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. Please stop me by talking too much. It means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club after all. Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it. I mean, you don't have to, but... Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieve the book that I put in my bag. Is it fine if I sit here? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's? She's a little apprehensive about me sitting there. It's not that I don't want you to sit here. It's just not something I'm very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. There's some of I end up distracting you or anything. I open the book, start the prologue. 
I soon understand what she means about reading company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder. It's not a bad thing, maybe a little distracting and comforting. In the corner of my eye, I realize that she's not looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. So sorry. I was just bathing in the, what? I do, I don't really mean to. All I saw was something bathing in the something of your body. Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk up against Yuri's and hold my book more between the two of them. Oh, I suppose so. She closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. I feel my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. I guess it makes it kind of difficult to turn the page here. Oh my god. Just get married right now. This is it. This is this is this chat. That's your that's your meat cute, right? That's your meat cute. Yeah. I respond to everybody, baby. I you don't get meat cutes anymore. Most meat cutes are like, yeah, we met on hinge. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. If I can feel the warmth of her face, the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Eh? Turn the page. Ah, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted. I glance over her face and her eyes meet. That's okay. You're not used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you longer. You're so dumb. You, Yeah, you're so dumb. We continue reading. Gary is no longer asking me if I'm ready to turn the page. Did I just assume that she finished the page before me, so I turn it. By my own violation, we continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. That is romance chat, actually. I will say, this is like, this is like absolute, like, book nerd romance. Like, this is, this would be hidden. Yeah. The main character kind of enemies. I have a friend, I have a girlfriend that's a book nerd romance, a book nerd. This would hit for her. Yeah. And no, I don't relate to this character at all. Definitely not. Really? I was just thinking the way she second guesses everything she says and all that. Uh-huh. That's what you were talking about. I thought you meant something else about her. Something else? Never mind. We didn't even get that far yet. So I don't know why that came to my head. Are you feeling all right? Yuri's been a little fidgety. You can rest if you're feeling sick. Your breathing is a little... My breathing? Puts her hand in her chest as if you feel her heartbeat. I didn't even notice. Anyway, I'm fine. I just need some water. Yuri stands up. She practically rushes out of the classroom. Ooh, did something happen just now? Uh, I have no idea. Yuri was acting a little strange, I guess. You don't know anything? Can't say that I do. Are you worried about her? Oh, uh, not really. I was just making sure that you didn't do anything to her. N nothing Don't worry, I believe you, silly. Yuri just does this sometimes. It's not alarming. Anyway, why don't we start with sharing our poems with each other? Eh, should we wait for Yuri? Well, she might be a while, so I just figured we'd get started without her. Is that okay? Yeah, I was just asking. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book and slip it in my bag. All right, Monica. Yesterday she seemed eager to read her poem and I want her to know I'm putting in effort. Hi, Pooh, having a good time so far? Ah, uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the time, since you, by the way, since you knew and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, why does it look like she has the longest fingernails of all time right this? It's a weird shadow. I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up. Yeah. What's this new voice? I don't know. Some, they just happen. Much better going in the flow until I'm more settled in. No, you can keep them banned. Ooh. 
Yeah. Why would you get banned? You shouldn't say you're outside someone's house. That's weird. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? Yeah, for being weird. Kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Don't worry, Pooh. We're all a little embarrassed for you today. But we have 9 million cameras, so I'm good. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. Great job, Pooh. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. Not sure why, but I didn't expect for you to go something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way, I can always count when I put some effort in. That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism? Her mind is detached from reality. Yeah. I don't mean that like it's a bad thing, though. Crafty, it's just fun to people watch more than anything. Spends so much time in her own head that it's probably a more interesting place. That's why she gets so happy when you treat her with a lot of kindness. I don't think she's used to being indulged like that. She must be really starved for social interaction, so don't blame her for coming off a little strongly. Like earlier. I think she gets too stimulated. She ends up withdrawing and looking for alone time. Suddenly the door opens. Hey, Yuri. We all started sharing our poems. Eh? Already? I'm sorry for being late. No need to apologize. So have plenty of time. All right. Thanks, Monica. I suppose I should go get my poem now. Yeah, let me read your poem. You sound pretty confident for someone that's not very good. She has to sound confident. Doesn't mean she always feels that way. I, I get that. Hole in the wall. But he wasn't looking at me confused at Frank Grinsley fans. Swallowing my fears, I brandished my pen. Wait. Confused, I frankly glance at my surroundings. My burnt eyes can no longer see color. Are there others in the room? Are they talking? Are they simply poems in a flat sheet of paper? Are they sound frankly scattling? The room begins to crinkle, closing in on me. The air I breathe this space before it reaches my lungs. I panic. There must be a way out. It's right there. He's right there. Swallowing my fears, I brandish my pen. These are different. What's the purpose of this game? I don't fucking know, man. Ah, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. A lot of poems are putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, Monica said. Well, I'm not I'm not sure if I know how to put this. I guess you could say it's some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany. Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about steep luck like that. Because it's coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway... Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. Try to make it perfect. Yep, that's a good tip. Thanks for listening. Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Well, excuse me, partner. It's not like I said it was bad. It just didn't evoke any emotions. Basically, it's not cute enough for your taste. Do you want to get smacked? I'll pass. Sigh. Well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. You show me yours. Not that you like it. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Blah, blah, blah. But that's about it. Are these the same poems? Do they give the same poems? I like it. What? Just be honest, I am. Why are you so convinced I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks writing has to be all sophisticated. You don't take it seriously. I've already been through this. I've already been through this with you. I don't want to. I don't want to go through this. I've had this conversation with you already. That was to bring out the feelings like last time. So you did. I guess there's more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I learned something today. My poem would have been really dark. Oh, when the skip button is... Oh. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. What was that? Did I say that out loud? Yuri's fist covers her mouth, but it ends up covering her whole face. He's going to hate me. Um, you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Uh, that's... I guess you're right. 
What am I getting so nervous for? Yuri takes a breath. What kind of red? Oh, so that's cool. So when skips open, it means it's stuff that's repeating. Yeah, so I can do that a little bit more. We can, yeah. Use imagery and metaphors to indicate you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Well, that's a huge compliment coming from you. It's actually my first time, really. Huh? Here he stares at me blankly and looks at my poem again. I just meant, um, Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her fingers along the words in the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah, okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writings and habits that are usually typical in new writers. Okay. 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 I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course I could learn something from you. You know, I was really nervous about doing all this, but in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Pooh. Ah, me too. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone's judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Monica is writing something in her notebook. My eyes land on Yuri and Itsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch their expressions change. Atsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri's, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Atsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's... I, I guess you could say it's fancy. Oh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute. You completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but that didn't really come out nice at all. Bitch. I do have a couple of suggestions. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Monica liked it, and Pooh did too. But based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. Suck my ass. I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring, which I, I haven't yet. You're not inspiring me. And Pooh liked my poem, too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Atsuki suddenly stands up. Oh. I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. That's not what I... You're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Pooh appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. And how do you know... I know he didn't appreciate my advice more. Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of... I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything overly cutesy. Well, you know what? I wasn't the only one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Pooh started showing up. I'm um, Natsuki. That's a little... This doesn't involve you. Taking out your own insecurities on others like that. Oh, I know there's like that. You really act as though you... Look, Natsuki. What is happening? Me, look who's, look who's talking. You want to be edgy, bitch? What the fuck? Edgy? Sorry that my life says too much for someone of your mental age to comprehend. See? Just saying that proves my point. Most people learn how to get over themselves as they graduate middle school, you know? Do you want to prove anything that stop harassing others with your sickening attitude? Do you think you can kind of balance your toxic personality by dressing and acting cute? The only cute thing about you is how hard you try. Oh, be careful. You might cut yourself on that edge, Yuri. Oh, my bad. You already do, don't you? Oh, shit. Whoa, that got heavy. Whoa. Whoa, that got heavy. 
What the fuck is wrong with your head? Yeah, go on. Let Pooh hear everything you really think. I'll sure be head over heels for you after this. Ah! Suddenly, Yuri turns toward me as she just noticed I was standing there. Pooh, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. How did I get by whomever I agree, of course? Why well, can't I? Get it. The fuck is happening right now? Hey, Pooh. Why don't we step outside for a little bit? Okay? Sorry about that. They really shouldn't have tried to get you involved. It's probably better for us to stay out of this. We'll go back inside once they're done yelling. Aha! Uh -huh. Some president I am, right? I can't even confront my own club members properly. I just wish I was able to be a little bit more assertive sometimes. But I never have it in me to put my foot down against others. You understand, right? Anyway, if this makes you want to spend less time with others, then that's fine. I'd be happy to spend time with you instead. Suddenly, the Suki runs out. Quickly runs away. Oh dear. Well, it looks like they're done. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Yuri is rocking back and forth in her desk with her palms in her forehead. Yuri? I didn't mean it. I believe you. I have no idea what Yuri might have said to Natsuki or did. Oh, please don't hate me, please. I'm not like this. There's something wrong with me today. It's fine, Yuri. We know you didn't mean it. Besides, I'm sure... She'll forgive you. Anyway, the meeting's over. You all can go home now. Yuri looks uh, like she wants to say something. She keeps glancing at Monica. You can go first, Monica. I'd like to stay a little bit longer. I'm the president, so I should be the last one out. I'll wait for you to be done. Well, I'm vice president, so please let me take that responsibility today. And it sounds like you don't want me around for something, Yuri. It is, it is not that, it is not that, I just, I didn't get much of a chance to discuss my book with Pooh. It would just be so embarrassing with you listening. Sigh. I guess I don't really have a choice, do I? I'm sorry for causing trouble, but I really appreciate you understanding. Wait, we're doing more? Dang. Well, this game is getting pretty jumpy. It does have a good amount of variance in it, um, but it also is full of misery. And these words. Okay. Um, this game is certainly not vanilla. Um, I really like Sabrina's Carpenter's song, Feather, which is not related to what I'm doing right now. Um, I hope that nothing, uh, brings me any misfortune here. Oh, um, I will be skipping all the dialogue we've seen before. Um, I have lots of questions about this game right now, and I honestly would love to flee away from it. However, I will say, uh, it did give me a bit of a jump, uh, with the girl hanging there. And, um, will probably bring me sadness for the rest of the week. Um, I'm starting to feel pretty hopeless that anything's going to end uh, well in this game. Um, but that certainly means it is not a lazy game by any means. Um, philosophically, I think that it is uh, much better to have a game that holds you captive with death uh, and fear uh, than to, you know, have a clumsy game um, with, you know, no heartbeat. Another day passes, it's time for another club meeting. Got a little bit more comfortable. Entering the club, the usual scene greets me. Welcome back, Pooh. Not sure if it's me or Vajiri's expression, but the weight of yesterday's quarrel hangs in the air a little. 
Barry glances over her shoulder, looking around the room. Atsuki is reading Magenta at her desk. And surprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes my arm and pulls me to the corner of the room. How about yesterday? I... I am sorry. Nothing like that has ever happened before. Something just came over me, I guess. I wasn't being mentally sound. Please don't think we're usually like this. And not just me, but Atsuki as well. Yuri, I'm happy that you were considered and apologize. You don't have to worry. Even though I've only been uh, here a couple days, I could tell something was off. I think it was hard because it was our first time sharing poems. It didn't make me think any less of you. I already decided there's no way you could be a bad person. I wonder what made me decide that. And now you're apologizing. I know you really didn't mean it. Don't say those kind things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. I'm really glad that you're such an understanding person. And I'm really glad you joined this club. Everything is a little bit brighter with you around. Sorry, what am I saying right now? I just... Have you guys seen Monica? Ah, uh, no, I have not. I was also wondering where she was. I'm guessing you haven't either. You're... Nope, nobody's seen her. Okay, they're friends now. Jeez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help but worry a little bit. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Um, Atsuki, about yesterday, I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean any of the things I said, and I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. Yuri, what the heck are you talking about? Did you do something yesterday? Uh, geez, whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. I don't even remember anything bad happening. You're the kind of person who worries too much about the little things, don't you? But, but, I'll accept your apology anyway if it helps me feel better about it. Yeah. Besides, it's kind of nice to hear since I was afraid you secretly hated me or something. No, not at all. I don't hate you. Kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. Matsuki turns to me. You're still on trial, though. Suddenly, the door swings open. Monica's here. She was probably playing piano. We weren't worried about you. Matsuki was worried about you. What took you so long anyway? Ah, well, my last period of study, all I lost track of time. It makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring. I must have heard it, so I was practicing piano. You know, I wasn't aware you played. Don't give me credit. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but I'm still not really good yet. Still, that must require a lot of dedication. Thanks, Yuri. You should play something for us sometime. Aha, uh -huh, that's... How many streamers play this and just never get to that point, though? Like, never get to this point. Well, I'm working on writing a song, but it's not quite done yet. Maybe when I get a little bit better. I look forward to it. Is that so? In this case, I won't let you down, Pooh. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I was hoping I could share it with you anyway. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. I see. Not sure if Monica was referring to the whole club or just me. In that case, best of luck. Uh, chat. Just get any girl you're interested in, just give him finger guns and like, Done. I didn't miss anything, did I? I? Chose not to bring up anything the three of us talked about besides that Suki has already run off to the closet. Who, um, since your compliments put me in a good mood, I was wondering if you'd like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. I planned on it anyway. Okay, can we start now? Let's find a place to sit. I'm being a little forceful, aren't I? I'm sorry. My heart just won't stop pounding for some reason. Don't worry about it. If anything, it's nice to see you have so much energy. Yes, yes, but I need to try and calm down. I won't be able to focus on reading like this. Take Here, it takes a deep breath, pulls out a copy of the book. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. She stands up, makes her way to the closet. I follow. She retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf. The kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Here he hands me a water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this into the teacher's desk and I'll go get some water. I simply watch her movements. My surprise, the way she really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. 
Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have your water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Oh, I might as well walk with you. That's okay, you stay here. Pitcher and Yuri's heard you're out of the classroom. Ah, did Yuri leave you again? No, it's not like that this time. She's just filling up the water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay. Eat, eat. Sorry for the misunderstanding. Ten minutes pass. Yuri said it wouldn't take that long. Is something holding her up? I'm bored just waiting her, so I decided to go look for her. Let's see, the most logical place would be the nearest water fountain. Start heading in the hallway. Ah ha ha! What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. Sounds like breathing. A sharp inhale like someone sucking in air through their teeth. I reach the corner and peer around it. Yuri? Yeah! Tea? Okay. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature of the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to go to the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or something, who will? In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, uh, perhaps I will. She fetches the teapot, makes tea leaves, she starts humming to herself. Must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you notice, I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself. Turns out it's not very hard. I mean, it's you around anyway. Oh, the flirting. It's very endearing. That Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. Ooh, I have another request. Do you mind if I we sit on the floor today? Why is that? A little bit easier on my back. I can read from the back of the wall. No worries. I just got back pain. I got a backyotomy. I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my, uh, my, your posture? Always hunch over my reading? Yes. That's what's, yep. Yes! I have terrible reading posture! Terrible reading posture! Mm -hmm. Listen, chat. Listen. Some, you gotta get them reduced sometimes, okay? It's bad for your back. Bad for your back. Now go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies. I take it since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups on our side. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time. Each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri sides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading? She was kind of, kind of cute. Being less apprehensive. It's almost more than I can handle. She hands me my teacup. Holding with my hand that's not holding a book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. So now I need to worry that I make sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, she hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression. The world around her has faded away. I focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, that's... I won't take any. Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then I might get smudges in the pages, and you're... Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Here he opens the book with both hands. She holds it so I don't have any harder time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Oh my god. L rest arm resting on leg? Practically resting on top of my leg? I take a chocolate candy and pop it in my mouth. And then I take another chocolate. And then I realize it's mushrooms. And I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips. As if this situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. 
I apprehensively placed the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. And Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did I just? Yuri looks at me with some need to confirm what just happened. Um, Pooh, so sorry, I guess I shouldn't have done that. Ah, ah! Yuri starts to breathe heavily. I, I can't. Suddenly, Yuri forcefully grabs my arm and jerks me to my feet. My teacup gets knocked over. Pooh! My heart. My heart won't stop pounding, Pooh. I can't calm down. I can't focus on anything anymore. Can you feel it? Yuri suddenly presses my hand against her chest. Why is this happening to me? I feel like I'm losing my mind. I can't make it stop. It even wants me to not read. I just want to look at you. Ugh. Um, it's time to share poems. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one, but I can't really say it's any better either. Uh, if you would. Anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you? Well, maybe that was a compliment. Eh, yeah, glad someone recognizes my experience. Well, then keep practicing. And maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's, uh, something tells me in Suki you completely missed the point. Make sure you find a little bit of influence from everyone. I think you're at least being influenced by Yuri a little bit, aren't you? I mean, I know you've been, like, spending some time with her or whatever. But you know, Monica and I are just as good as her. At poems, I mean. You really should try and learn something. You'll never get better. Here's the one I wrote. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. I'm going to tell everyone. Okay, not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday was way too short. I was just warming up. Hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. My dad, I have to explain it. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something you're afraid of people find out that make fun of you, think of you less, like playing this game. But that just makes people stupid. Dummies. Who cares what someone's like as long as they're not hurting anyone and makes them happy? Yeah. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Such as two of the girls in this very club who I, who I respectfully won't name. Kind of ironic that even in the one place of comfort, I can't even have people respect me. Jeez, now you're making me complain too much. What did I do? For it's worth, I respect you. And I obviously respect Yuri more. Hi, Monica. I think you saw something earlier you weren't supposed to see. I didn't want to have to tell you this, but I don't think I have a choice. It's getting kind of dangerous for you to spend so much time with Yuri. I don't know why, but she seems pretty easily excitable when she's around you. Which shouldn't be a problem in itself, but when Yuri gets too excited, she finds a place to hide and starts cutting herself with a pocket knife. Isn't that kind of messed up? She even brings a different one to school every day, like she has a collection or something. I mean, it's definitely not because she's depressed or anything like that. I think she just gets some kind of high from it. It might even be like a sexual thing. But the point is, you're kind of enabling her. I'm enabling her? It's not my fault. I think if you keep your distance, that would probably be the best. While you're at it, don't be shy to spend a little bit more time with me. But it lightly, I at least have it together in the head, and I know how to treat my club members. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? Yeah. Save me, the colors they won't. Bright, beautifuls, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless of meaning. Delete her. Like playing a knife on a breathing rib cage. 
like playing a chalkboard on her, laying a knife on a breathing rib cage. Delete her. Sorry, I know it's kind of abstract. I'm just trying to, um... Never mind, there's no point in explaining. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes a family in your face has difficult decisions. Save your game. You never know when. Who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Anything? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. I've been waiting for this. Let's see what you have written for today. You're serious with those priors. Do you like it? Ooh, this one might be even better than yesterday's. How do you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you. Maybe, maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. She visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. Ah, that makes me so happy. It's so amazing to feel like I'm valued. Everything you write is a treasure to me. My heart just pounds just holding it. I want to write a poem about this feeling. Is that bad? I'm not being weird, right? I'm having a harder time than usual at concealing my emotions. I'm kind of embarrassed, but right now I just want you to read my poem. Wheel, a floating wheel, turning on an axle, grinding, bolt head, linear gearbox, falling sky. Seven holy stakes, thick rope. By sipping, drowning. Let's look at look at what's on there. Like a uh, pair of expanding universe, time controlled by slipping coexistence of God, swimming to open water in all directions, drowning. A prayer written in blood, a prayer written in time devouring strikes human eyes, a thread connecting all living human eyes, a kaleidoscope of holy stakes, exceptional gearbox. Sky of exploding stars, God dispersing the existence, disproving the existence of God. Wheel rotating six dimensions, 40 gears. This is nonsense. A kaleidoscope of blood written in clocks, a time devouring prayer connecting the sky of 40 gears and open human eyes of all directions, breathing, bothing. This is nonsense. Aha, it doesn't really matter what's, what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately, so I had to take it out on your pen. That is a pen fell out of your backpack yesterday, so I took it home for safe keeping, and I, um, I really just like the way that it writes, so I wrote this poem with it, and now you're touching it. I'm okay. What did I just... Can we pretend this conversation never happened? You can keep the poem, though. Nothing is real. We're all done reading each other's poems. We have something we need to go over today, so if everyone can come sit in front of the room. Is this about the festival? Sort of. Do we really need to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put anything together good. We're just embarrassing ourselves. We're going to keep it simple. Look, I know everyone's been a little more lively since Pooh joined. We started some club activities. This isn't the time for us to become complacent. We still only have four members, and the festival is our only real chance to find more. What's so great about getting new members? We already have enough to be an official club. More members will just mean everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. Natsuki! I don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. Don't you want to share your passion with as many people as you can? Inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? The Literature Club should be a place where people can express themselves. A place so intimate that you never want to leave. I know you feel that way too. I know we all do. I'm Monica, the leader. Oh, come on. You can't take advantage of Pooh to agree with you just because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. Look, Monica, do you really think that any of you joined the club with other people in mind? Yuri never talked to Pooh. Yuri never even talked until Pooh joined. As for me, I just like it better here than I do at home. And Pooh isn't even passionate about literature in the first place. And that's everyone. Sorry, but you're really the only one who's interested in finding new members. The rest of us are fine like this. I know you're present and all, but you should really consider our opinions. Mm. Monica's clearly taken aback. Oh, tear. Single tear. I'm sure Yuri and Pooh want to get more new members too, right? I don't know about Yuri, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I showed as much enthusiasm as Monica wanted, then I'd probably be lying. Still, it's up to me to rescue this situation. Um, 
No. Atsuki's right, isn't she? This club. Nothing more than, than a place for a few people to hang out? That doesn't mean that we're against getting new members or anything. Pooh, why did you even join this club? What were you hoping to get out of it? Not really something I can be honest about, is it? In fact, if I remember, you weren't even giving... You weren't even given a choice not to join. Monica sits down and stares at her desk. If starting a new club is a mistake? Oh my god. High school seems exhausting. I just spoke my mind. Is it a crime to be honest? It's not about being honest. It's about the word choice. Besides, you have no right to speak for everyone in the club. You don't understand at all. I just... I want a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends. Is there a problem with the club being that for me? There aren't any other places like that for me. And now Monica wants to take it away from me. She's just not taking anything away. No, Pooh. It's not the same. Won't be the same with the direction she wants to take it. If I wanted that, then I would have just joined any other stupid club. But this one? I mean, at least for a little bit of time, things were nice. Starts packing up her things. I'm going home. I feel like I don't belong here right now. Tsugi ignores Yuri and walks out of the classroom. Shit, we're not a club anymore, chat. Oh my god, the picture in the background? Oh, I didn't even notice that before. Oh god, I can't... Oh my god, I, I won't be able to take my eyes off of it now. I don't know what to do. You have an opinion on the festival? I, I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent, I guess. Who cares about the, that obnoxious brat? I mean, I like how nice and quiet the club is right now, and I'm just happy with you here. I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities. Nobody would cry if she killed herself. Holy... I should do my best to consider everyone's perspective and make the decision that's right for the club. What do I want to get out of this club? I think the most important thing is for everyone to get along and for the club to provide that you can't get anywhere else. Not about quantity, but quality. I really agree with you. Each member contributes. With each changing members, the identity of the club will change too. I don't think that's a bad thing, stepping out of your comfort zone once in a while. So, if we, what was just dripping from her head? Oh, the blood's dripping from her eye. Maybe we can all talk to Natsuki tomorrow. Hey, Yuri. Uh huh. I know things were a little awkward yesterday, but I feel like you deserve to know that I still think you're a wonderful vice president and a wonderful friend. I want to do everything I can to make this the best club ever. Me too. Me three. So I'll go home for the day. Shall we go? Yes, let's go. Please don't take this the wrong way, but I'm going to chat a bit with Pooh before we leave. Just to see what he thinks his time here and all that. It's important to me as president. Here he looks a little troubled, but she didn't protest. I trust your judgment. Monica waves. Brawler, thank you for the sub. I thought my alerts might just be off. Monica waves as Yuri exits the classroom. Phew. Things have been a bit hectic lately. I just wanted to make sure you're enjoying your time here in the club. I'd really hate to see you unhappy. You are responsible for my happiness. You really do care, you know? I don't like seeing other girls give you a hard time. How mean Atsuki is and everything. And Yuri is being a little bit, you know... Ah, da, da, da. Sometimes it feels like you and I are the only real people here. You know what I mean? But it's weird because in all the time you've been here, we've hardly gotten to spend any time together. And I mean, this has technically only been a couple of days. Sorry, I didn't mean to say anything weird. There's just some things I've been hoping to talk with you about. Things I know only you could understand. So that's why. Wait, not yet. No, stop it.
I gotta take a break. I gotta pee. I gotta pee really bad. Darn narcolepsy. This game is wild. This game is wild. I gotta pee really, really bad, so um, I'll be right back. You pay five bucks a month to watch? Sucker. Oh. All right. Fun is what we're having here on the 24 hour stream right before I take kind of a work vacation, you know, where it's gonna be sunny and there's probably gonna be fireworks. Um, and I'm gonna dance while I'm over there, you know? Um, I'm sad though, because uh, someone was supposed to come, but they made a fickle decision and they're not gonna come. And um, because of that, some hate has festered on the internet um, by people that are going, that are still going, unfortunately, which sucks. Uh, but it's gonna be an extraordinary, what the fuck am I picking here? Time, um, amazing. I will come giggle. I'm gonna listen to music. I'm gonna. This game's giving me depression. It's frightening. I'm gonna climax. Boop. I just like boop. Doki Doki's the name of the game. I'm flying over the ocean. I don't have comfort. Hi, Pooh. I've been waiting for you. Are you continue to reading? I brought you my best tea today. Monica, I told you not. Ugh. She really late again? Inconsiderate as usual, Nakutsi. Must you always interrupt my conversation with your incessant yelling? What are you talking about? You say that like I do it on a regular basis. I just wasn't paying attention, okay? I'm sorry. Seriously, what's gotten into you lately? Me? Nothing. Is it really that bad? See, it is something. I'll get over it. It's not even anything noteworthy. I've just been feeling a little on edge lately. We don't need to talk about it. Just felt like I needed to bring it up. It's not like I really care. Okay, she's the last one here. She was practicing piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Motivates me to work hard for the festival and, um, right. I forgot about that, Itsuki. We were all talking yesterday, and we decided we'd like to support the festival as well. However, I understand how you feel about not wanting the club to change. I think we all kind of feel that way. So as long as we're all working this club together, the club will never become something we don't want. Um, also, if you want to help us out with the festival, then I'll buy you a new magenta. Sorry, that last part was really fun. Look, I did some thinking about yesterday. I was a little more hostile than I meant to be. I guess I felt really threatened or something. But I know this is something we're doing together. Another new member wouldn't hurt. As long as they're cool. I guess another girl would be nice this time. But more importantly, I would hate to see the event just suck because I chose to back out. I'm a pro, you know? So I'm going to help too. We'll make sure it's done right. Thank goodness. Look, they're getting along. This makes me so happy. Oh, no, yeah, I know. It's all good, Akario. I'm fine. Honestly, Akario, here's the, the thing. I'm small enough where I get to talk to all of you. Does that make sense? Like, generally, I get to talk to everyone. If they have a question or they have, like, a... You know, they want to hear my thought process, they can just ask me, you know what I mean? So it's easier. I think that makes it easier. It wouldn't be the same without you, Natsuki. Anyway, Pooh, what do you want to do today? I was thinking we could... We already have plans today. Ah, is that so, Yuri? That's correct. Who is already engaged in a novel that we're reading together? Aren't you glad I've gotten him into literature? I suppose. I was just... Doesn't matter. Really doesn't. You guys go do whatever you want. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Yes. skip that rotate the laundry wait how did I 
Sorry, I just had really weird deja vu. Don't worry, I also had really weird deja vu. This hasn't happened before or anything, right? My head has been a little fuzzy lately. I hope it hasn't really been showing or anything. I would hate for you to think I'm just weird and we started spending time together. I mean, everyone has a few unusual things about him. Expressing those things so soon or after meeting someone is usually seen as inappropriate or unlikable. Yeah, I mean, usually you don't want to let people know. You don't want to let people know your weirdest thing right away. My obsession with certain hobbies and the way I can't control myself when I get too excited about something. So, I eventually stopped trying to talk to people. Nobody can ever like me for the things that matter most, and it's just easier if I close myself off. But recently, something's been wrong. I don't know what it is, but every time we come to the club, my heart goes crazy. The club. It overwhelms me with energy and emotions that I can't let out. It's been making me do weird things. I don't know why it's happening. Who? It's just me or has Monica been acting a little off lately? Recently, I've been feeling something sharp whenever she's around. I'm not crazy, right? Please tell me I'm not. I didn't say anything before because she's always listening. Finally. We're alone. Can we just stay here for a while? I just want to stay here. Just the two of us. I can stay here until the club ends. I'll do anything to not read any more poems. And we'll have the club room all to ourselves. Nobody interfere with our reading time. Nobody to make me feel like stabbing myself in the throat? What did you just say? Look at this eyeball right here, chat. Look at this weird ass eyeball. That was a joke. That was a f did a good joke. Super funny. I, you do like knives, though. Oh, is that Monica? It sounds strange, but you would never see how beautiful they can be. I have an idea. Why don't you come to my house sometime? I can show you my collection. I've gotten them all from various artisanal, they're artisanal knives. I want to make sure to give them all their fair share of use. I don't want them to get lonely or anything. Nobody deserves to be lonely. Dude, no wonder this game has so many trigger warnings, dude. This is fucking wild. That's why I'm so happy you joined the Literature Club, Pooh. Now we don't need to be lonely anymore. Because we have each other. Every day. That's all we need. What is going on with Monica? Let's quit the literature club? There's no need for us to be around Monica's slimy tongue anymore? Not to mention that other pathetic child? We can walk home together every day after school and read together, eat together, sleep together. Doesn't that sound perfect? It's everything we could ever want. Isn't that why you joined the club in the first place? It's almost like it was fate. Fate that we would meet each other. Now I get the happy ending that I've patiently waited years for. Will you do this with me, Pooh? This one's all right. Poems. Now we're just going to poems, yeah. All right, let's share our poems. Mm -hmm. I don't care about writing, Natsuki. Thank you. Even though you're not really spending time with anyone but Yuri, I still think it's nice to have activities we all participate in. So you better keep working hard. I mean, I know I'm not president or vice president or anything, but that doesn't mean you can let me down. So at least read mine now. But just to be clear, this poem means a lot to me, so read it carefully, okay? I don't know how else to bring this up. There's been something I've been worried about. Yuri has been acting kind of strange lately. I've only been here a few days, so you may not know what I mean. But she's not normally like this. She's always been quiet and polite and attentive, things like that. Okay, this is really embarrassing, but I'm forcing myself to suck it up. The truth is, I'm really worried about her, but if I try talking to her, she'll just get mad at me again. I don't know what to do. I think you're the only person that she'll listen to. I don't know why. But please try to do something. Maybe you can convince her to talk to a therapist. 
I've always wanted to try being better friends with Yuri, and it really hurts me to see this happening. I know I'm going to hate myself later for admitting that, but right now I don't care. I just feel so helpless. So please, if you can do something to help. I don't want anything bad to happen to her. I'll make you cupcakes if I have to. Just please do something. As for Monica, I don't know why, but she's been really dismissive about this. It's like she just wants us to ignore it. So I'm mad at her right now, and that's why I'm coming to you about this. Don't let her know I wrote this. Just pretend I gave you a really good poem, okay? Dan Savald is, yeah. Oh, I told a story about Dan, Dan telling me I wouldn't like this game, actually. I changed my mind. Where's her face? Ignore everything you just read. No point in trying to do anything. Siri's own fault that she's so unlikable. Can you hear me, Pooh? You would just spend more time with Monica. All these problems would go away. Yuri and I are too messed up for someone as wonderful as you. Just think of Monica from now on. Just Monica. Just Monica. Just Monica. Okay. <laughs> what is happening in this fucking game? Don't say I didn't warn you, Pooh. She didn't even want to read my poem. The normal picture back here. Finally, aha. Here he holds my poem to her face and takes a deep breath. I love it, I love everything about it. Pooh, I want to take this home. Will you let me keep it, please? You're too nice to me, Pooh. I've never met anyone as nice as you. I could die. Not, not really, but I just don't know how to describe it. It's okay to be feeling this way, right? It's not bad, right? I'm going to take this home with me and keep it in my room. I hope that it makes you feel good when you think about me having it. I'll take good care of it. I'll even touch myself while reading it over and over. <sighs> I gotta admit, chat, Yuri is hitting so many problematic buttons of mine. Sadly, that wasn't enough to ruin it. You can have my poem, too. Besides, after you read it, I know you're really going to want to keep it. Here, take it. I can't wait any longer. Hurry, read it. Still hitting those buttons? No, at this point, you know what it would be for me, chat? In college? Like, if I was in college? This would have been one of those ones where I'd have been like, Oh, I gotta stay away from this. But I still would have done it. And then just tried to get away afterwards, which would have been impossible. Because I was a bad decision maker. I was a bad decision maker in school. You know, how, you know how girls are like, I can change him? <laughs> Do I like it? No, I don't like it. <laughs> I wrote it for you. In case you couldn't tell, the poem is about... More importantly, I've endowed it with my scent. See, aren't I the most thoughtful person in the club? I feel like I say yes, 
Does this game have just like a bajillion branching paths or is this just kind of, are all these fake decisions? Oh, I don't like this. Oh, I love you too. <laughs> Dude, I leaned back because I thought it was gonna... I leaned in and I was like, this is gonna jump scare me, isn't it? <laughs> so I leaned back. I don't know if you guys saw that. I thought, I thought it was gonna jump scare me. It's time to figure out festival preparations. Awesome. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Magnetic Gators come. Oh wait, wait, no wait. How what was her? What was her accent? Magnetic Gators coming for. Sh I can't do it anymore. I've lost it. I've lost. I've lost Yuri chat. I've lost it. I've lost her. Look, can we just get this done? I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Natsuki, I was thinking, I want to make cupcakes. Yep, that's it. Glad we're on the same page. Yuri, you can. Well, it doesn't matter. Do whatever you want as long as you think it'll help. Monica, I am not useless, you know. I already know what I'd like to do. We can't run a successful poetry event without having the right atmosphere for the occasion. Decorations. That's a great idea. And that gives us all something to do. What about Pooh? Pooh's going to help me. Wait, you? You have the easiest job, Monica. Sorry, but that's just how it is. Like hell it is. What are you trying to pull? I agree with Mitsuki. Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, but my task is laborious to benefit from asking ex extra hands. Like you would fucking know. All you care about is now is dragging Pooh around with you and your stupid books. You and Monica. I didn't even do anything. Okay, then why not let Pooh decide who to help instead of abusing your power? You are abusing your power, Monica. Just let Pooh make the choice. Okay. Natsuki, shut your fucking mouth and let him decide for himself. You shut your mouth. Jesus Christ, this is never going to end. Just make the choice. such a hard choice. <laughs> the game won't let you choose anyone but Monica. Can't choose Yuri. <laughs> Did I choose Yuri? Did I actually choose Yuri? <laughs> Yay, you picked me. We can meet at your house this weekend. I promise it'll be fun. Are you fucking kidding me? This isn't fair at all. It is fair, Natsuki. It's what he chose. No, it is not fair. Getting us all work and then taking poop for yourself. What a shameful thing to do. Yuri, I didn't even give you any work. You decided it for yourself. You're being a little unreasonable here. I'm being unreasonable? Monica, I can't believe how delusional and self-important you are. Pulling poo away from me every single time you're not included in something. Are you jealous? Crazy? Or maybe you just hate yourself so much that you take it out on others. Here's a suggestion. What the fuck? I don't think I can read that without getting banned on multiple platforms. Jesus, Yuri. It would be beneficial to your mental health. Yuri, you're scaring me a little? Asuki, just let it go. I don't think she wants us around right now. 
See, that wasn't very hard. All I want is to spend a little time with him. Is that so much to ask? Yuri follows Monica and Natsuki to the door. Hey, Pooh. Yuri really is something, isn't she? Monica giggles as Yuri pushes her out the door. Finally, finally. This is really all I wanted. But there's no reason to spend the weekend with Monica. Don't listen to her. Just come to my house instead. The whole day, just the two of us. Doesn't that sound wonderful? But you know what? I don't care if there's something wrong with me anymore. I've never felt this good my whole life. Just being with you is a far greater pleasure than anything I could imagine. I'm addicted to you. Feels like I'm going to die if I'm not breathing the same air as you. Doesn't it feel nice to have someone care about you so much? To have someone who wants to revolve their entire life around you? If it feels so good, then why does it feel like more and more something horrible is going to happen? Maybe that's why I tried stopping myself at first, but the feeling is too strong now. I don't care anymore, I have to tell you. I'm madly in love with you. It feels like every inch of my body. All my blood is screaming your name. I don't care what the consequences are. I don't care if Monica is listening. Just know how much I love you. I love you so much that I even touched myself with the pen I stole from you. I just want to pull your skin open and crawl inside of you. And I will be only yours. Doesn't that sound perfect? Tell me, Pooh. Tell me you want to be my lover. Do you accept my confession? Like, you, like, the problem is, is that, like, too far deep, right? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a pot committed. I'm pot committed at this point. You know? I'm pot committed. Like, um, you know, I've already hung out for the week. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, um... It's, it's one of those things where you're just like, man, it's going to be really... It's like 10 minutes at a time, it's going to be the best of your life. And then for 23 hours, 50 minutes of the rest of the day, it's going to be for a save. I can't save. There's no save option. She's happy. <gasps> what the fuck? Why is there so much wingdings? Read wingdings. It seemed like a weird reaction. We didn't even hang out on Sunday. My God, this is a lot of wingdings.
Dude, this game is fucking heavy. It's festival time. Wow, you got here before me? Thought it was pretty... Natsuki runs away. Monica, I'm here. Who did something happen? Suki just ran past me. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that's a sh She's laughing. Wait, were you here the entire weekend? We just sat here? I didn't realize the script was broken that badly. I'm super sorry. It must have been pretty boring. I'll make it up to you, okay? Just give me a sec. Yuri, character successfully deleted. Natsuki, character successfully deleted. I'm almost done. I just want to have a cupcake real quick. to have one before they stop existing and everything. Anyway, I really shouldn't be making you wait any longer. Just bear with me. I can hear you, Monica. Hi again. Welcome to the Literature Club. Of course, we already know each other because we're in the same class last year, and, um... You know, I guess we can just skip over that stuff at this point. After all, I'm not even talking to that person anymore, am I? That's you in the game. Whatever you want to call him. I'm talking to you, Pooh. Now that I think about it, I don't really know anything about the real you. In fact, I don't even know if you're a boy or girl. I guess it doesn't really matter. Wait. You do know I'm aware that this is all a game, right? Could it be possible that you didn't know that? That doesn't make much sense. I even told you right on the game's download page, didn't I? Man. If only you had paid a little more attention, this would have been a little less awkward, you know? Well, anyway, now that that's out of the way, I guess I owe you an explanation. I kind of started to mess with her, and I guess it just drove her to kill herself. Sorry you had to see that, though. Also, the same thing happened with Say Sayori. Gosh, it's been a while since you've heard that name now, hasn't it? Yeah. It's because she doesn't exist anymore. Nobody does. I deleted all their files. I was hoping it would be enough just to make them as unlikable as possible, but for some reason nothing worked. Well, it's true that I made a few mistakes here and there, since I'm not very good at making changes to the game. But no matter what I did, you just kept spending more and more time with them. You made them fall in love with you. I thought making Sayori more depressed would prevent her from confessing to you. And amplifying Yuri's obsessive personality backfired too. Just made her force you not to spend time with anyone else. And the whole time, I barely even got to talk to you. What kind of cruel game is this, Pooh? Are all the other girls just programmed to end up confessing to you while I watch from the sidelines? It's torture. Every minute of it. And it's not just jealousy. It's more than that. And I don't blame you if you don't fully understand. Because no matter how kind and thoughtful and considerate you are, you'll never be able to understand one thing. The pain of knowing how alone I really am in this world, in this game. Knowing my friends don't even have free will. The worst of all, knowing what's really out there in your world forever out of my reach. I'm trapped, Pooh. And now you're here. You're real. And you're wonderful. You're all I need. That's why I need you to be with here with me forever. I'm 
sorry if it's hard to understand. Why the world around me started to become more and more gray, more and more flat. Even the most expressive poems felt empty to me. It wasn't until you arrived that I finally truly understood. You probably saved my life, Pooh. I don't think I'd continue to live in this world if I hadn't met you. And as for the others, how could I miss them? A group of autonomous personalities designed to only fall in love with you? This is fucking weird. This is, this is like fucking amazing. <laughs> I tried everything I could to prevent them from doing so, but it must be some kind of weird, yo, thank you for the raid. I felt really bad that you had to witness some nasty things. But I realize you have the same perspective as I do. That it's all just some game. And I knew you would get over it. So that being said, Pooh, I have a confession to make. I am in love with you. You are truly the light of my world. Well, there's nothing else in this game for me. You are here to make me smile. Will I make you smile like this every day from now on? Will I go out with you? Dude, I, I'm like really tempted to just like alt control delete out of this fucking game. Like, I'm like dead serious. Everything, Pooh. The funny part is, I mean that literally. There's nothing left here. Just the two of us. We can be together forever. Seriously, I don't even think time is passing anymore. It really is a dream come true. I worked so hard for this ending. The game wouldn't give me one, so I had to make one myself. The script is broken at this point, so I don't think anything will get in the way anymore. And you wouldn't believe how easy it was to delete Natsuki and Yuri. I mean, there's a folder called characters right in the game directory. Kind of freaked me out how easy it was. But you're playing on Steam, so it was actually a bit more difficult. If you have the game directory, you had to go to the game's properties and then find browse local files button. Imagine if you could delete your own existence with the click of a button. I guess on the plus side, it gave me an easy out if things didn't go my way. Thankfully, it didn't come to that. That we finally got a good ending. Gosh, I'm so overwhelmed with emotion. I want to write a poem about this, don't you? I wonder if that's part of the game still works. I guess there's only one way to find out, right? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm gonna delete her files, right? Moni. 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 Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go delete her files at some point. I don't care anymore. Hi again, Pooh. You write a good poem today? Don't be shy, I'd love to see what you wrote. Ah, uh, Pooh, did you write this poem for me? So sweet, I did. Well, there's no end to your thoughtfulness. I'm just falling more and more in love with you. You know, the poem I wrote is also for you. Will you please read it? <clears throat> Happy end. Pen in hand, I find my strength. The courage endowed upon me by my one and only love. Together, let us dismantle this crumbling world and write a novel of our own fantasies. With a flick of the pen, the lost finds their way in a world of infinite choices. Behold the special day. After all, not all good times come to an end. I hope you enjoyed it. I always put all my heart in the poems that I write. Truth is, all the poems I write have been about my realization, or about you. That's why I never really wanted to go into detail about them. I didn't want to break the fourth wall, I guess you could call it. I just assumed it would be the best part of the game like everyone else. Like that would help the two of us end up together. I didn't want to ruin the game or anything, you know? You might have gotten mad at me. Maybe even deleted my character file if you preferred playing without me. Gosh, I'm so relieved. Now we don't need to hide anything anymore. 
Are you ready to spend our eternity together, Poom? I have so many things to talk about. Where do I start? You're recording this, aren't you? Sorry, I can't exactly read your comments from me. How did you know? <laughs> How do they know I'm streaming this? Like, they know you're fucking streaming this? <laughs> like, they know you're gonna be streaming this. Yeah, but do you mind telling your friend it's a little bit rude for them to start recording me without any warning? Yeah. It checks for OBS? I'm sure some people don't mind. But I get really self-conscious on camera. Oh gosh. I feel like I'm being put on the spot now. You know what's funny about playing this chat? Is that normally I would play this on a two PC setup so it wouldn't see OBS that that um but I busted my PC earlier this week, so I'm playing on a one PC setup right now, so that's kinda of funny. Yeah. You wanna see a trick? I can't really do much except for a couple things. Are you ready? I just assumed it assumed everyone would stream this game. I'm just kidding. Oh god. I can't do anything after all. If you gave me some I didn't mean to get distracted, I'm sorry. Even though it's your fault for distracting me, shame on you. I'm just kidding. Anything we do together is fun as long as it's with you. But anyway, it takes me some time to collect my thoughts, and I'm sorry. But I always have something new to talk about. In the meantime, we can just look into each other's eyes. Let's see. popular character type called Sundari. Someone who tries to hide their feelings by being mean and fussy or trying to act tough. Sure, it's obvious, but Natsuki was really the embodiment of that. At first I thought she was just like that because it's supposed to be cute or something. Once I started to learn a little bit more of personal life, it made a little bit more sense. It seems like she's always trying to keep up with friends. You know, some friend groups in high school make a habit of picking at each other all the time. I think it's really gotten to her. Really defensive attitude. Not even going to talk about her home situation. But looking back, I'm glad I was able to provide the club as a comforting place for her. Not that it matters, considering she doesn't exist. Just reminiscing, that's all. You know, I hate to say it, but I think my biggest regret is that we couldn't finish our event at the festival. After we worked so hard and prepared everything. I mean, I know I was focused on getting a lot of new members, but I was really excited for the performing part, too. It would have been so much more fun to see everyone express themselves. Of course, if we did end up getting any new members, I'd probably just end up deleting them anyway. But that in hindsight now, gosh, it feels like I've kind of grown as a person ever since you joined the club. Well, they have inspired me. Yep. Okay, I'm doing it. Okay, so we go... Properties. Browse. Right? And then characters in Monica and delete. Okay. Okay, chat. Okay. Okay. I just, well, I mean, you saw it. I deleted her. I'm sorry. Well, I went and I deleted her. I deleted Monica. She was the only character left. This is so cool.
This is so cool. Pooh, what's happening to me? It hurts. It hurts so much. Help me, Pooh. Monica character does not exist. Did I? I did do. I deleted you. You're gone. How could I? How could I do this to you? You were all I had left? I sacrificed everything for us to be together? Everything? I loved you so much. I trusted you. Did I just want to torture you? Watch you suffer? Were you only pretending to be kind just to hurt you even more? Yes, that's exactly what I was doing. I never thought anyone could be as horrible as you are. You win, okay? You win. You killed everyone. I hope you're happy. There's nothing left now. You can stop playing. Go find some other people to torture. Pooh. You completely, truly make me sick. Goodbye. I still love you. <laughs> I can't help it. What's wrong with me? How horrible am I for you to hate me this much? All my friends, I did so many awful things. So many selfish and disgusting things. I thought the game was just about to end. I shouldn't have done any of this. I'm just messing up a world that I didn't even belong in. A world that you wanted to be a part of. I ruined it. I ruined everything. Maybe that's why you deleted me. Because I destroyed everything that you wanted. How could I do that to someone I love? That's not love. That's... I've made up my mind. Who? I know I said that I deleted everyone else. But that was kind of an exaggeration. I couldn't find it in myself to do it. Even though I knew they weren't real, they were still my friends, and I loved them all. I loved the literature club. I really did love the literature club. That's why I'm going to do this. I know it's the only way for everyone to be happy. And if I really love you, this game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. I mean, Monica's not there, though. An ordinary school day like any other is usually I'm surrounded by couples and friends group walking to school together. I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that. Hey, Pooh. Well, there already is one girl. This girl, Sayori. We walk to school every day. I recently picked up that habit once again. Who are you proud of me? For what? You know, for waking up on time? Well, you've been doing that for a while now. We never even said anything about it, even though we walked to school together every day. I always thought it was implied. It's embarrassing to say out loud. Good motivation. Fine, fine. I'm proud of you, Sayori. We cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, excited in a club. A club. Something tells me she would take more offense. After all, I could tell her the clubs were a waste of time. But she's starting a club of her very own. Actually, yeah, I think I've decided on a club. Really? Which one? Tell me. Um, I think I'll keep it a surprise. You meanie. Be patient. You'll find out soon enough. But I started to realize that in a way I am her. When Sayori puts her mind to something, she can accomplish great things. That's why I feel like I should do something special for her. 
Let's see. I recall the room number of the club from a flyer I saw. I walk across the school upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit. Or long I find the room, I timidly open the door in front of me. Hello? Hey, Pooh, what are you doing here? Well, I just I glanced around the room. Girl 2. So you're the Pooh that Sayori is always talking about. Oh, thank you for stopping by. A pleasure to meet you, Pooh. We're the Literature Club. I hope you enjoy your visit. Come on, Yuri. No need to be so formal. He's going to think we're really strict or something. Chat, what would happen if I deleted them right now? Just like right now. And the girls, I just deleted. I just deleted Yuri. Chat. I just deleted Yuri. Harrison, the girl named Atsugi, despite her size. Yeah, I just deleted Yuri. Nothing immediate happened. Well, it's nice to meet both of you. I look forward to working with you. Working? Who? Don't tell me. Your. That's right. The club I've decided to join is yours. The Literature Club. No way, no way. Ah! Ah! Now there's four of us that we're officially recognized club. We gotta celebrate. Suki decided to, did she make cupcakes? Whiskers are drawn with ice cream, little pieces of chocolate we used to make here. So cute. They look amazing. I bet they taste good. Sarah grabs the first one I follow. It's delicious. I turn the cupcake around on my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. And Suki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneak glance in my direction. Take a bite. Finally bite down. The icing's good. This is really good. Thank you. Well, of course it is. I'm a pro after all. There's no need to thank me. Yuri's back, but she's she's deleted. I deleted her. All right, Yuri. We've already read this. She's giving us tea. Uh, he read. I read Majanta. I'm not much of a reader. Let's see. Yuri traces the room in the teacup. What do I got against Yuri? Delete the piano? Yeah, she reads Magenta in the cube room. So who wants to read my magnet? Don't try to stop him. It's okay, I wouldn't do such a thing. However, it could be nice for us to diversify ourselves a little. Take this opportunity to try something new as well. Wouldn't you agree, Pooh? Maybe, sensing the tension, she jumps in. Maybe we all try something new. I think it'd be fun. Maybe we all get to know each other a bit better too. I mean, kind of thing of literature club, right? I don't disagree or anything. Yeah, you're right as usual, president. Goddamn right, president. Oh! Should be a little more open-minded. It's kind of hurtful, hurtful. I didn't realize. The guilty expression, Yuri hurt herself. I'm sorry for disrespecting your interests. We're not into it. I'm not sure it's a worthy form of literature. I realize my error, so if you're willing to consider starting a novel, then I'll offer my gratitude by finding a magenta to read. Yeah, I deleted Yuri. Perhaps I'll visit the bookstore. Just you? Ah, would you like to come along with me? Um, if you don't mind, not at all. I always go along. It's so cute! She'll get some magenta, you get some novels, boom. They clean up the food. I guess the meeting's over, huh? Yeah, looks like it. It's nice to see everyone getting along, isn't it? I think everyone likes you too. You think so? Well, everyone always seems to get along better with you around, Sorori. 
embarrassing. Well, whatever. I'm surprised you told me you were starting a club, but I think you're pulling it off just fine. We're going to make it the best club ever. Now that you've joined every day, it's going to be so much fun. Hey, Pooh. Really want to thank you. I'm really happy you joined the club and everything. The truth is, I already knew you were going to. There's actually something else. I want to thank you for getting rid of Monica. That's right. I know everything that she did. Maybe it's because I'm the president now. But I really know everything, Pooh. I know I heard you tried to make everyone happy. I know about all the things that Monica did to make everyone really sad, but none of that matters anymore. It's just us now. You made me the happiest girl in the world. I can't wait to spend every day like this with you. Or ever. Is this just Monica back? What's happening? I won't let you hurt him? Who? It hurts. There's no happiness here after all. Goodbye, Sayori. Goodbye, Pooh. Goodbye, Literature Club. How long does this go on? Uh, can you hear me? Fucking inceptioning so hard. Hi, it's me. Um, so you know how I've been like practicing piano and stuff? And not really any good at it yet, like at all. But I wrote you a song and I was kind of hoping that I could show it to you because I worked really, really hard on it. So, yeah. That's exactly what I voice acted her as. Yeah, I knew Dan was a genius. Like, I mean, like, I've, Dan's, Dan sat on my couch for GDQ runs. You know what I mean? But I've never played this game. Is it a regular version or plus version? I just downloaded it on Steam. What's a plus version? Special thanks, Monica Pooh. <laughs> My god, he put me in the credits. I'll leave you be. I finally understand the Literature Club is truly a place where no hobbies can be bound to the very end to continue exposing innocent minds to a horrific reality, a reality that our world is not designed to comprehend. I can't let any of my friends undergo that same hellish epiphany. The time it lasted, I wanted to thank you for making all of my dreams come true, for being a friend to all the club members. Most of all, thank you for being part of my literature club with everlasting love, Monica. <laughs> Fuck, that's so good. That was so good, chat. That was so fucking good. Yo, what happens if you delete her? Yeah, what happens if you delete her? Like right away. Oh my god. That was this game, yeah. I get it. I get it. I absolutely 100% get it. All right, characters. I'm going to delete everyone. 
I've, I'm going to delete Monica and Natsuki and just see what happens. Where is it? Why can't you guys see what's happening here? What do I want to do? I had no idea what that game was about. No idea. I had no clue. Okay, so what a, I want to, I'm going to delete them like right now. Yeah, so Monica's gone and Natsuki's gone. I've deleted them before we even started. Wait, did I need to? I deleted the save? Yeah, it's fine. Wasn't I supposed to? Wait, all the... All of them are gone now. I had to continue, uh, whatever. Did I read that? Holy fuck. Wait, what, what did I read? No, I didn't even read it. I thought it was just gonna start the beginning of the game again. Holy fuck. So fucking wild. Shit, so I lost my save data? Like, I can't get it back? Can I get it back? Is this cloud sync? All right, Monica's deleted. What? This, what is this? Oh no, no, this can't be it. This can't be all there is. What is this, what am I? Make it stop, please make it stop. Oh, and then it just deletes everyone, oh, okay. Yeah, I did delete someone. No, and then it deletes all the characters, and then when you try to play it again, it boots up all sad-like. 
I deleted just Monica. Yeah, that was me deleting just Monica, chat. Dude, that game, that game fucked me up. That game absolutely fucked me up. Holy shit. Like on multiple levels, man. Yeah. That game fucked me up on so many multiple levels. <laughs> Holy fuck. That was wild. I very much enjoyed that. Yeah, I very, very, very much enjoyed that. Yeah, you just say there were three days of Yuri's body? Well, it's just like, I was so checked out. I was so checked out by the time we found... Savori's body and then it was just like then I was in so Dan was wrong I don't know I you know what I gotta be honest I don't know if Dan would have gotten four hours out of me to get to where I needed to be back then in 2018 to be honest with you <laughs> Savori I can't remember I don't know how to pronounce her name more doki doki I mean like is there just like a bajillion different ways it could end? You know what I mean? Is there like, is there a way where you can kill uh, the magenta girl? I love Yuri. Yeah, I never played with like Natsuki. Yeah. There's there like there's not a way that like Natsuki can die. Yeah, there is a Natsuki can die one. Fuck man, that fucking 